about to start here. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, let me know if you can hear me. If it sounds good. I'm using a different microphone. All right, looks like it looks like it sounds good. Sounds like it sounds good. Um, all right, so uh, how you guys doing this evening? Glad you can you can join me. Just kind of wait for a couple minutes for people to to log on here. Um, All right, so let's see who we uh we got going on here. Who who's on the stream? All right, so it's like we got a uh, you have echoes. Let's see a comment for echoes. Uh, Got South Africa here, France. Got some pretty good, uh, good geographic representation here. Try to do some of these live streams a little bit earlier, so if people are overseas, at least overseas to the east, um, maybe catch some of this a little bit. Got the Bay Area here, Raleigh, Sebastian, Florida. Not sure where that is. San Diego, Ohio, Appleton, Philly, LA. So got a pretty good representation here. Um, so yeah, I do these live streams about every few months. There's not really any kind of schedule to it. It's been probably six months since I did the last one. Um, but yeah, this is really fun to do. I like to uh, answer some questions here and I'll do a little bit. I'll talk about the map behind me a little bit. And um, but yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. Just as a fair warning, we are having a thunderstorm right now, um, and we do lose power a decent amount. The worst of it's passed, so it should be fine. But if some things just go, you know, off all of a sudden, it's probably because the power went out. Um, all right. All right. So I'm going to start off uh, just going through some of these questions here. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, Got New England, uh, England used to live in Chattanooga. Huh, that's pretty cool. Mariposa pin. I do believe the Mariposa pin is up. So I believe that I, all the pins that I've gotten, I believe are up. So I don't think there's anything left hanging. Um, howdy, Allison. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the wildfire is up there, so it's still pretty bad, apparently. Um, yeah, being from California, I know, you know, wildfire alerts are pretty crazy. When you just can't, I mean, you can't see anything, but you can smell everything. Um, Spring Hill, Tennessee, Ammon, that's, uh, is that where the, it used to be the Saturn place, the Saturn, but now it's Cadillac assembly plant. Uh, Randy, I don't I don't have a Twitch account, so I just I just do YouTube. Um, I mean, yeah, I I just do it on here. Drew Mack, how's it going, man? Um, all 
Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, wow. We got a Brando from Visalia. Brando on two wheels, huh? Well, 85 degrees in Visalia at the end of June. Write that one down, man. That's a, not going to get that one too often. Got Lodi Berlin. The Berlin or the fake one in New Hampshire? Berlin. San Francisco. Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. I do appreciate all the support. Um, you've been, you're OG. You've been with the channel for a while, so I appreciate that. Um, hold on a second. Uh, Richard Eaton, hello from the Pribilof. I, I have no idea where that is. I don't know where that is. I should. I do not. Um, whatever. Thank you very much. I do appreciate... Uh, Super chat. I, I do appreciate <laughs> Give me your money. Um, do I think it's more likely for Puerto Rico to become a state or independent? I mean, ultimately, it's it's up to the voters there. I think it's been pretty close for years. It's been kind of 50-50-ish. Uh, I don't think many people there, from what I understand, want full independence. Um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure exactly. Me, personally, I feel it should be a state. It's too big to be a territory. I mean, it's over 3 million people. Territories are usually measured in hundreds of thousands of people or tens of thousands. So for Puerto Rico, I mean, that's a that's a big kid living in the basement. No offense to Puerto Rico, but they, they should be a state, three million people. I think that's by far the most populous territory in the world. I don't even know what the second most populous one is. It's going to be something in the 300,000 range or something. So, um, yeah, I, I'd like it to be a state, but uh, ultimately it's going to be up to them. I think there's not much, I don't think there's many people fighting it at the U.S., you know, the D.C. level. I think there's some, you know, grumbling with some of the, you know, people and stuff. But as far as D.C., I think people are okay with it being a state. But um, uh, Colin, um, the reason why there's no, no skyscrapers in D.C. is because there's a height limit. Nothing can be taller than the, the dome of the Capitol building. So as soon as you get across the Potomac River into northern Virginia, there's a bunch of high rises. Um, I don't know if it's Arlington or Alexandria, whichever one is the one that has all the high rises. It's got the, uh, you know, Tyson's Corner area. There's a lot of, you know, downtown looking stuff in D.C., but it's not in the actual district. Uh, I think a few cities have that as well. Salem, Oregon doesn't have any high rises. Nothing could be taller than the their weird looking state capitol building there. So um, yeah, that's why there's no no skyscrapers in DC. Okay, Rick, that, yeah, thank you for clarifying. I knew that that was where Saturn was and they closed it down. I'm glad they you know repurposed it. Um, Elliot stopped in traffic. Well, it's 3 p.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> or six, I don't know where you're at, but yeah, Saturday at, or Sunday afternoon is a weird time to be <laughs> and stuck in traffic. Of course, if it's Atlanta or Los Angeles, it's always rush hour. So, um, Mary, hello from Corcoran. Uh, hope you're staying dry. I was just back in Visalia um, a couple of months ago, and I tried to go out there to get photos of the Tulare Lake. It's just, a, you know, it's a huge lake bed that's been dry forever. Uh, but it's come back to life. It's huge. And uh, in terms of surface area, it's just, it's a huge lake. It's not very deep, but it's um, it's come back. But you can't get anywhere near it before there's uh, barriers and roads blocking out, or, uh, you know, um, what do you call them, uh, bollards and things. They have things blocking off the roads because it's really flat. I mean, people talk about western Kansas being flat, but the San Joaquin Valley is really flat. So I uh, hope you're staying dry there. JL, I'm I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm from I'm from California, but I've lived here since 07 and was in South Carolina before that. Thank you, Margaritaville from Long Beach. I appreciate that. Tornado warnings in Louisville. It doesn't surprise me because it's when I went outside earlier today, it had that kind of, you know, this could get kind of gnarly, that 
I mean, it didn't feel like tornado type weather, but you could tell that there's probably some significant weather not too far from here. So Louisville doesn't surprise me that it's um, coming down pretty good there. Got Dallas. Uh, Ryu, Ryu, um, with the Colorado River shortage, I, you know, I don't think there's any simple answer. I think, honestly, it would be, you know, if California were to go ocean desal, desalination, which I think they're going to probably have to do eventually, that would elite or take a lot of the pressure off the Colorado River. But, um, it's not just California. I mean, it's, it's, I think Arizona draws a lot vegas is actually really good about using water despite it being the desert i think because it's such a new city they were able to develop things already with water conservation in mind so i don't think vegas uses that much as much as you think i think a lot of the stuff they use is reclaimed water and gray water for the fountains and golf courses and stuff uh, here's where i think you have maybe more of an issue because there's a lot of population growth in southwestern utah and there's no water here um, but there's probably a good half a million people, or not, well, 300, 400,000 people here that's growing a lot. So um, I think if you could get some of this area off the Colorado River, that would help. But as long as people are growing here, it's it's not going to, you know, be a huge offset. So, um, you know, honestly, it's a tough it's a tough question because you can't tell people they can't move there. You can't say you can't move to Arizona because there's no water. You'd like to, you know, people would think that, but despite the pictures of the record low reservoirs, Lake Powell, Lake Mead, like, you know, people, the population growth has still gone up in the past couple of years since those uh, pretty scary images that are not, you know, those images of the low lake levels weren't just, you know, trying to be sensationalist by the, by the media. So, but honestly, I don't have a good uh, answer for it. Um, conservation alone isn't going to do it. You know, I, I don't know. Um, but I, I do think ocean desal has got to be part of the issue. And if, you know, Arizona may have to work a deal out with Mexico right here, Puerto Penasco, maybe get a little something, something here, um, some kind of aqueduct. That might be Arizona's best choice. But, I mean, it's expensive and complicated to, to, to desalinate the ocean. But, I, you know, I think that's probably the best option. Um, other than I, from the engineering standpoint, I don't know as far as um, better irrigation techniques and stuff like that, I'm not quite sure. Tohoku, um, Ross County. Uh, I don't know, follow up on that one where Ross County is. I'm not sure exactly where that is. Um, Okay, hold on a second. I... All right. Um, the hottest place in the country, Cleveland, Texas. I'm sure Texas is pretty hot anywhere in June, but I believe Yuma, Arizona is the hottest city in the U.S. There's hotter places, but I think it's uh, the hottest city. Um Hello, Raleigh. Yeah, Colin, um, Mount Washington is, uh, it is one of the tallest ones in the, in the eastern U.S., but um, most of the tallest ones in the eastern U.S. are in the southern Appalachian, so not too far from here, like Tennessee, North Carolina, is where most of the above 6,000, the 6,000s, the, six, the sixers, you don't have the 14ers out here. Yeah, um, San Diego does also have that kind of height limit. If you've ever flown in the San Diego, it's strange. I, I don't, I don't think there's any other big city in the U.S. where the airport is right downtown and it's basically in the CBD. So you have to have um, lower uh, elevate or lower uh, building heights. But San Diego, it's not because of earthquakes. It's probably the least likely place to be destroyed by an earthquake. It could still happen, but in terms of the California coast. Beetlejuice from Oslo. It's getting late over there. 
Probably beautiful this time of year. Just three days since the solstice. Probably quite a bit of sun there. Uh, Chad, I studied geography. I, I got a degree in geography from Cal State Northridge in Los Angeles. I specialized in meteorology and climatology within geography. Um, Aldo, I haven't done a specific video on the Sonoran Desert. I've done, I've, I've talked about the deserts in general, but not specifically with Sonoran Desert. I was born in Sacramento. Although I, it was when my dad was in college there, I was probably six months when we, I don't, I'm not from Sacramento. AT, ATID, thank you for the, the five pounds there. Would have been five euros, I guess, a couple years ago. Um, yeah, uh, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, I like to do some of these live streams, so it's possible for people in, in the UK or other parts of Europe to, or of course, I guess UK isn't Europe anymore. Um, do, side note, do people from UK still call themselves European? I mean, are they still... I still call you guys European. I don't care what you call yourself, but you're still over there, so that's European to me. Um, JL, uh, yeah, UC Berkeley. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the department there, but um, Northridge was, I mean, it, it's, it was an incredible geography department. I'm not sure how many of the professors that were there back in the late 90s are still there, but yeah, Scott, I've, I talked to my parents. They said it's kind of strange how it hasn't been really hot in the valley yet. So it's just uh, same here with in Tennessee. If you live around here, probably even Atlanta, it hasn't been that hot. This I mean, we're almost to July. I don't think it's hit 90 degrees more than one or two days this summer. So, it, um, so usually by now, we're not leaving the house, just sitting inside with the air conditioning on. Uh, yeah, I'm not from Fresno, but near there. It's called, the town's called Visalia, but I'll usually say Fresno because people have sort of heard of that halfway between San Francisco and L.A. I don't say Massachusetts properly. How do you say it? Well, I hope you got a giggle. I don't know. How do you pronounce it? I know I mispronounce a lot of things. Plus, I had this weird raised in California, spent my adult life in the South kind of accent, which sounds kind of weird. A Kassoon, uh Howdy from Monterey. Yeah, I, li I lived there for a couple years. I lived in Seaside, right near uh, Laguna Del Rey Park. Real nice area. I loved it there. Uh, a A R, if I got that pronounced right. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, I will actually be in Maine very soon, but uh, we are not going to be going to Mount Katahdin. Um, it's not going to be a hiking trip. Uh, we will be in Maine. We're going to be in Portland mainly visiting visiting friends, and I might. Uh, I'm not sure what else we're going to do there, but hiking Mount Katahdin is not going to be part of it. I'd love to do it, but that's not that's not part of it. Um, Hussey's Huddle, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't do the state profiles as much as I used to. Um, and honestly, it's because they, those are the videos that take the most effort. They take a lot more work and research to put into them. And they tend to not get a ton of views. And I'm not just posting videos for views, but if, if it takes twice as much effort for the same number of views, it's tough. So, um, I do like to do them. I think I do them all right, but it's they do take a lot of more work than a typical video. Yeah, Matthew, that is an issue with a lot of stuff going to livestock feed. I, my last video was about ag, and so a lot of the corn and soybeans, or most of the corn and soybeans, is going to animals. Um, you know, cows are cows are hungry. They eat a lot, so that's. You know, that's getting into some ethical environmental issues with 
um, beef consumption. Um, I don't think we all just want to eat chicken only, but I mean, so that, yeah, that's not for this channel, but that is some, some ethical questions there. Um, whatever, uh, do I think the southward migration trend will ever reverse? Yeah, absolutely. It'll, it always reverses. Everything's going to reverse. I mean, there's been throughout the U.S. There's people moving around. Um, you know, probably whatever state you live in, you're probably complaining about Californians moving there. Oh, they're just taking over. But I mean, everybody was moving there in the 90s and early 2000s. So it got really expensive. People were buying up, you know, there was two people that wanted to buy every one house. So things got crazy expensive. Now it's people are leaving. Um, it's getting really expensive in Texas. Uh, Tennessee, Atlanta is crazy expensive. Uh, Chattanooga is not bad, but Nashville is really bad. So Nashville is becoming so expensive that people are moving to Chattanooga, uh, making it more expensive here. Um, but I do think it's eventually going to change. I mean, because at some point it's going to get too expensive in the South, and most people's you know movements are going to be based on financial financial reasons. So. I can see people going up north eventually. And, you know, this is the area that everybody left in the 50s to the 90s. And it's still, it's lo going down in some places, but most for the most part, the Midwest is slowly gaining population back after a lot of years of downturn. Um, some of these areas here, the, the interior Northwest, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's as much desire to live there as people... Everyone says, I want to live in the middle of nowhere. I hate people. But I think this is a bit too middle of nowhere for most people. And um, there's a limit to people that I think will want to move there. Um, but with, you know, with California, I mean, I was just, I checked, I'm just fascinated with the, the, the rise and fall of rents in San Francisco because the city's lost like 8% of its population in a couple of years. And rents have come down quite a bit. They're still expensive, but it, it's not it's not that crazy anymore. So if people keep leaving, the landlords are going to want somebody in there. So I think it's going to keep being fluid. Um, Austin I'm, is a kind of kind of place where I can see it just getting too expensive. And those are a lot of high tech jobs that you can work from home doing that too. So um, yeah, I, so I do see it happening. Um, although people talk about moving to the Great Lakes area to escape climate change and that's all that is true, but um, that's a that's a longer term thing. That's that's 50, 60 years. So in terms of 10, 20 years, I do would expect to see people moving generally north, I would think. That's my guess. A big earthquake in the northwest is certainly possible. There was a big one back in 99, I think, outside of Olympia, Washington. Uh, Portland is about the least... Um, susceptible city for a major earthquake with the huge exception of the giant one offshore but that's one of those you know if that one goes the world's in trouble kind of thing so um yeah so yeah the northwest as can certainly get earthquakes up here the uh, just not quite with the same frequency um matt yeah you could you can certainly get get going in GIS with a degree in urban planning. I mean, as long as you know GIS, you don't have to have a degree specializing in GIS. Um, I know people that did remote sensing in college where it's like a air, air photo interpretation and a, a satellite imagery interpretation, kind of like defense type stuff. And um, But even though they specialized in that, they also knew GIS. And I know people that are doing GIS even though they specialize in that. So if you know GIS, you don't have to be even a degree you don't have to be formally trained if you know gis you can probably get a job with it because it's not it's an underutilized uh position i every city should have a gis tech but they don't all michael you're moving from mcallen texas to rapid city south dakota that's a big move that's a big move that's a, I, I like that move though uh mcallen down here well the uh Mexican border here, it's growing a lot. The Rio Grande Valley, there's about a million and a half people here. You don't hear too much about this, but it's a popular growing area to hear. So that you're going to have the opposite climate. You're going to have nice summers, terrible winters. Um, 
but yeah, I, I like it there a lot. It's really, really pretty. Um, it's probably a lot cheaper in Rabbit City than than Texas. Um, but yeah, hope you uh, hope it works out for you. Get some good hiking boots because you probably don't need them too much in McAllen, but you'll want them down up there in Rapid City. Nico, uh, you can do a lot of stuff with a geography degree. I think the biggest problem with a geography degree is that a lot of employers don't know what that means. And so to a lot of people, geography is just, you know, you memorize the capitals and the longest river in China. You just, it's just trivia, but um, it involves so much else, like environmental planning, urban planning, transit. Like all, think about so many YouTube channels that are in transit and, you know, similar type uh, fields, similar channels, but th their geography, whether or not they have the word geography in it. So um, there's a lot you can do. A lot of it is GIS based and it's going to be a lot of tech oriented stuff. Uh, you know, there's also some stuff with the CIA and defense. Um, if, if you want to do the more interest in world, world espionage type stuff, but I do have a video about geography degrees and what you can do with it. And it's, uh, there's a lot more than you might think. Rick, yes, lots of caves in northern Alabama. A lot of people, if you ask them what part of the country do you think has the most caves, they'll probably think it's here, the Rockies and stuff. It's actually over here. This is where you had the most caves. And Alabama, I think, is fifth or sixth in the country in terms of total number of caves. Tennessee is the most with 10,000. Uh, Missouri, second, Arkansas, Virginia, West Virginia. But the western mountain states don't have anywhere near as many caves. But if you're into caving, Chattanooga, Tennessee is about the best place to be. I mean, you're near some of the most famous caves in the world. Yeah, that is what I mean. As a geographer, of uh, Colin, I know, of course, that the European latitudes are much higher, but it is still just kind of interesting that there's that far north and it's still mild temperatures, um, like in Ireland and the UK, even Iceland. Iceland doesn't get anywhere near as cold as, say, you know, the coast of Iceland doesn't get as cold as Minnesota, So even though it's so much farther north. Oh, somebody's crazy here. Thank you very much, um, Marius, Marius. Thank you. I, I very much appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Um, yeah. Uh, trying to. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Thank you very much, Marius. Um, I just try to do what I can and just be who I am and uh, not, you know, see how it goes. <laughs> um, Leadville, Colorado, the highest incorporated city at 10. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that at 10,000 feet. I mean, I, for a lot of people, the highest elevation they've ever been is just I-70. When you drive across Colorado, the highest point is right about 12,000 feet. So um, you can be that high in elevation without even hiking or going any, any kind of mountaineering. ATID, thank you again for the for the British pounds. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, if you were to move to the U.S. from the U.K., top three recommendations: outdoors on a small budget. Uh, you know, honestly, Rapid City right there, outdoors on a on a budget. Um, yeah, it really depends on your outdoors. What you mean by that? This area generally is. Pretty cheap. West Virginia is a relatively cheap state, but I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of issues. But this part of the country, for the most part, is inexpensive, except for the kind of resorty towns or some of the more touristy places. So it's hard to, it's hard to give a, a specific recommendation, but um, it wouldn't be probably along the West Coast or in the Rockies if you want cheap um, outdoor adventures. Uh, Alan, thank you very much. Um, where else in America is a similar climate to Portland? Uh, 
it's going to be just somewhere else on the west coast because it's got the dry uh, the dry climate or the you know the continental west coast so um yeah, I and mean, the closest places to Portland in terms of climate are going to be probably somewhere around Central California coast because San Francisco is actually cooler than Portland in the summer. Um, Portland gets right on the coast, so it gets a little bit warmer. So it's probably going to be more like down here, but it is still that dry heat that it cools off more at night. Um, so, but yeah, there's nowhere in the eastern U.S. that's going to have a similar climate to Portland. Braden, my favorite city in Florida. Um, I don't know. I like Miami. I don't know. I, it's one of those places I, I probably couldn't live there. I just It's a fun place to visit, kind of like New Orleans. Um, if I were to settle down in Florida, I'd go with the Tampa Bay area or actually this part of the state. I don't know what it's called. I call it the armpit because it's kind of like, you know, the armpit. But that usually means just the worst part of the state. But it's real swampy, uh, rural. It's not the best uh beaches and not the fun spring break part of florida which is why i like it because it's not that part but it is very rural as far as cities go i'll go with the tampa bay area um, even though i do i do like miami but not as a not the place i'd want to live though honey badger what country has the highest capital city in the world i believe it's bolivia is it not bolivia la paz i should know that um we'll see uh Uh, Jeff, in South Carolina, I lived in Columbia. I went to to grad school at South at USC. The other, you know, the USC, not the the original USC. Hello, Ty from Chattanooga. Hopefully, you didn't get pounded with the storm. It wasn't that bad here, but I know it was pretty bad in some of the areas around here. Alternate, I I don't know what aerial America is, so I couldn't tell you that. Uh, Rick, I don't know why Bolivia has two capitals, uh, La Paz and and uh, Sucre. I think they had three, actually. Santa Rosa, is that a third? Um, like South Africa has three capitals. One is for the president and the executive branch. I think that's Cape Town. And then the, the parliament is in uh, Pretoria. And then the judicial is in Bloemfontein. Or, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's they have a different capital for each. So I think Bolivia might be the same kind of thing, a different capital for each branch of the government. I, whatever. <laughs> uh, MG Deadhead. Um, if I'm going on an interstate, I like I-70. It goes through, I think, the most interesting um, stuff. You don't have to go too far before something else is really interesting. I-20, I think, is probably the most boring one. Um, if I'm going back roads, I mean, I like the road along the Mexican border. Is that US 90? Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but it's, this kind of follows the border. Um, but yeah, it just depends on how much of a hurry I'm in and uh, how much time I have to, to stop and see places. But if I'm going fast, I'll take I-70. Um... All right. What is the most European country in Europe? That is that is the question of the evening. Hello, Seth from Central Arkansas. Uh, Charlie, City Nerd. That's I like City Nerd. Um, that's the number one channel crossover with mine. So when I go through my analytics, uh, so the highest percentage of people subscribe to this channel are with him. So the most most crossover. So it makes sense because we're similar kind of 
middle-aged nerdy guys with a one-man show, low-budget kind of channel. His channel, his videos are higher quality than mine, but um, yeah, good channel. I mean, it's a good urban planning channel. Uh, the Geography March Madness was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, though. It was a lot. I, if I would do it again, I couldn't start with 64. I have to start with 32. That it, it was, a, it was a lot of work. So it was a lot of fun, but I would have to do it differently. Uh, Drew, the next national park. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, Usually the way it works is something is a, becomes a national monument, and then after a while, if it's good enough, I guess, it becomes a national park. And most of the national monuments are just uh, BLM land that wasn't you know, not being used. A lot of the stuff, you know, people talk about the government owning a lot of land. It's all of it's just, a lot of this land is just unused. It doesn't have any uh, great mineral wealth, or it's beautiful land, but it's a... Uh, this becomes BLM land, Bureau of Land Management, and then after a while, if it's cool, it becomes a national park. So, um, what is it? New River Gorge was a national recreation area or something. It wasn't a national park until this a couple of years ago. So it, uh, but I don't know if there's any major area that should be a national park that's not. I don't know. I'm, Yeah, uh, fun while tubing. I, I do appreciate that. I don't. I'm not going to change doing things because of other channels, but I have noticed that when I do a video, I'll always do a search before I post it to see if there's anything else like that. And it it, it was hardly ever an issue. But the past few months, man, there's a lot of new channels in this genre. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to just like changed because of that I, was, I, I want I use that kind of as an excuse to change the maps videos to ones that viewers make um, but I, I wouldn't have done it just because um, of other channels doing that uh, Griffin thank you very much um, I don't know if I have any specific favorite attractions in Albuquerque it's just I just like the city and the culture uh, I know people a lot of like to focus on the the gang issues, which is which is really bad. The, the gang problems in Albuquerque are some of the some of the worst in the U.S. But um, I mean, I just like the the old town and the uptown area around the university. Um, but just this the the restaurant scene, just the general culture itself, not any one particular museum or um, attraction. Quartzite National. <laughs> Is Quartzsite the one where all the like the old hippies and RVs go to? Is that in Arizona? Tohoku, no, I did not explain Ross County. I couldn't I couldn't think of where it was. I thought it was Ohio. And so I don't know where in Ohio is. So it, it it, I don't know. I don't know where it is. So it is going to be more an exurban county on the outskirts of whatever metro area. I would imagine the outskirts of Columbus. Uh, but yeah, a lot of times with metro areas, um, what will happen is like there's the one that's like maybe the interior part of the county that's closest to the metro area has some suburbs. But by the time it gets to the edge of that county, it's just farms. But that's usually still counted, even though the county itself is not metro. A lot of times it has to do with, is it within reasonable commuting zone? Is there people willing to commute that distance from, from that place? Nico, I've not been to Alaska or Hawaii. Mac, I, I doubt they would ever do the national speed limit to 75. Um, it's 75 in most of the Great Plains and interior western states where it's you have a lot of flat space and it's 
uh, not, not many towns you're going through, but when you get to the eastern third, I think 75 would be probably a little bit too high for most of the, because if the sea limit is 75, people would go 85. And I think in the east, that's probably a little bit too fast um, I, for me personally. I think Texas speed limits are too high. I think they're dangerously high, honestly, but um, I don't think uh, they'll ever have, I don't know if there'll ever be a national speed limit again. I, I when I was a kid, people hated that 55, that you couldn't go faster than that, you know, Sammy Hagar and all that, but. <laughs> uh, Randy, do you think Americans will migrate to Canada or Europe? I mean, there have always been Americans moved to Canada and Europe, so I don't know if there's any more right now or less, but um, <laughs> Canadian friend once told me that you won't hear Canadians complain about how cold it gets there because if it didn't get that cold and more Americans would move there. So that's the only thing keeping a bunch of Americans from moving to, to Canada. Um, as far as Europe, um, there have always been Americans move overseas. So um, I don't know if that would be any different. I think right now the U.S. dollar is pretty strong. I think we can go to a lot of places and it's not crazy expensive. But um what I've been hearing a lot more about is more Americans moving to poor countries. There's been a lot of, you know, Americans gentrifying poor countries. So you thought of the digital nomad stuff. You look at the top 10 cities for digital nomads, like six of them are poor cities. Um, I think one in Vietnam is way up there. Philippines, Bangkok, Marrakesh, Morocco. I mean, the top digital nomad cities for rich people from rich countries are often going to poor countries. Um, little uh, larger scale gentrification, I guess. Um, AR, thank you very much. Uh, very kind of you. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a nice area. There's, there's, yeah, there's all kinds of great stuff on that road trip route. Um, if you're going to go, if you're in Western North Dakota, I'm assuming that means you're going to go to Teddy Roosevelt National Park. And that's the big draw to that part of the state and do go. Um, and in case you're thinking that park might be boring, it's actually, it's very subtle, but we've seen more wildlife there than just about any other park. I mean, you'll see, a, you know, I mean, so many bison, it's ridiculous, but you'll see a ton of wild horses, um, huge prairie dog towns, just huge just fields and fields of tons of prairie dogs, a lot of bald eagles. Um, yeah, it's a really, really cool park. And we've been there a few times. There's never been... Uh, much of a crowd there at all. It's, you basically have the whole park to yourself. Um, White Butte is the, the highest point in North Dakota. That's a pretty cool spot too. It's not heavily visited because it's it's North Dakota and it's not even near the interstate. So um, I would check that out too. It's pretty, pretty nice. But uh, if you're into it, check out a cave in South Dakota. That's a big caving area. Oops. Uh, Colin, that is an interesting question. Why are there no major cities in Canada, of course, in these eastern, the, the Atlantic provinces, so New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland? Um, I don't know why, why that is. I mean, a Canadian, I'm sure, could, you know, J.J. McCullough could answer that. But, um, yeah, this is pretty interesting that you know, the, the eastern seaboard of Canada doesn't have any of their major cities, so... Um, Maybe for defense reasons, you know, with the seaway here, you can get easily get goods to Montreal without having to basically like having an ocean port right there, but be a little more protected from, you know, the English or the French or whoever was trying to do. It's always been them too, so yeah. But I don't know. I don't know the reason for that though. Uh, Andrew, um, thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you liked the channel. Um, I don't think anything really got me into geography. I just, as a little kid, I just started reading maps. I don't know why. I just started, you know, my dad had a big Ram McNally Atlas, one of those, it's like, you know, huge, you know, foot tall, foot, yeah, huge, 
and I just read it. Little kid, the thing was the size of me <laughs> reading it. Um, I memorized the maps of the the roadmap of the towns we would go to, and I think I was just weird. I don't know what it was. Um, as far as professionally, I was in emergency management, natural disaster planning and response stuff for a while. Moved here, didn't uh, couldn't get in that field. Did all kinds of random things, but I'm right now I'm just doing this. Um, I don't have a regular kind of career. Um, this certainly isn't going to last forever, so it's not a, a you know I'm not going to be doing this in ten years, of course. So, but um, for right now, this is all that I'm doing. QMBWV, I, I don't know Dennis, Alaska. I have heard of Skokie, Illinois. That was that? It's uh, just north of Evanston, right? The suburb right along the lake of Chicago. But, so right about here. I think it's pretty nice. If I remember right, it was kind of a kind of a nice little town um, near the college town, but I don't know a whole lot about it. I have played GeoGuessr. Um, it, I don't like it as much as I should. I, I thought I would like it a lot more, but I, it's not, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it as much as I should. I actually injured my wrist playing it because you're just, you're just using your, the mouse all the time. Uh, Sepia Wolverine, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, off the beaten path trip from Orlando to Grand Rapids. I mean, that's, I, you'll be basically along I-75 if you're going the fast way. Um, I don't know, off the beaten path. If you're going to go through Cincinnati, um, there's a place called Jungle Gyms that's worth stopping at. It's just a giant crazy store. It's like a grocery store plus Disneyland plus I don't, it's called Jungle Gyms. That's, that, it's, you know, good place to stop if you're just looking to get out of the car for a little bit. Um, but uh, not a whole lot of off the beaten path stuff in that part of the country because that's just so heavily populated. Um, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, if you, if you want something small, I, that's a weird one that not everyone does. Furry Mike, Columbus, Georgia, what's up? I remember I was in Columbus, Georgia a couple years ago. There's like a, a warehouse there, and it's like a, I don't know what it is, but just randomly in big letters on the side, it just says, might as well. No context, just might as well. I don't, I love it. I don't know. I love out of context, just randomness like that. Um, T20, uh, the Visalia wood board, um, it's a little, this thing here that I have on my wall, uh, it's just a, somebody carved it and, or, you know, <laughs> put the, the name of the town. Uh, I'm not sure if it was somebody from Visalia that did this, or if there's just a bunch of these and you can just get one with Visalia or Modesto or whatever. But um, yeah, I just got it at a little, little gift shop in town. Thought it was pretty cool. I think it's meant to be a cutting board, but I wouldn't actually use it for a cutting board. Youper John, you moved from California to the UP. That's a big move. It's a big move. Um, the cutting edge of Great Lakes migration. That is the cutting edge because no one's moving there. Most of these counties are losing pop. Actually, I think all of them are losing population. I don't. I think maybe the county that is Marquette. I think is the only one. Is a Marquette County. I think that's the only one that's gaining population in the whole UP. Beautiful area, but that's uh, not a lot of jaw. I know people that live up there, up in up in Sault Ste. Uh, Sault Ste. Marie, 
but um yeah beautiful peaceful area if you can uh you know find a way to have income to live there it's beautiful it's cheap if you have money but i know there's a lot of issues with uh you know, a lot of areas that had a lot of jobs go away and you have a lot of issues with poverty and drugs. I know that's one of the big uh, opioid areas in the state, which is, you know, that's every state has the opioid part of the state. Yeah, Geekabibble. Uh, Florida is really expensive. I did a video recently talking about the 25 cities in the U.S. with the highest uh, it, the highest income to housing cost ratio. So basically, the you know the, some of the cheaper houses and all three of the major Texas ones, uh, Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio, the three largest ones there, were all in the top 25, but none of the Florida ones were. So Miami is, from a housing to wage ratio, Miami is almost as expensive as San Diego, which I guess makes sense. I mean, it's that same type of desirability. But yeah, Florida's getting really expensive. Um, Orlando was already kind of expensive. It's just more, I think it's still reasonably inexpensive here. If you want coastal stuff, that's, I mean, coast is expensive everywhere, but I think that's, you know, cheap for Florida, at least in terms of coast. But I think with Florida, a lot of people don't realize that the housing might be cheap, but your property insurance is going to be really, really high. So, um, Make sure you look at what it would cost to insure your house before you buy property in Florida because it's crazy. I know that a lot of insurance, they won't even give you a premium depending on where it is. X-Fire. Yeah, spelunking in Indiana. Indiana, you don't think about caves, Indiana, but there's a lot of caves around here um, in southern Indiana. Uh, the fact that there's a, a grotto, a group of caving people in Bloomington, which is the tallest town for IU, and they're really uh, active. So it's a great spot to go caving. For someone that wants to live in Puerto Rico, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've never been to Puerto Rico, so that's one of the interesting things about if it were to become a state, would people move there? Is that is that something that is keeping people from moving there. I don't know because the only real difference is, um, hold on a second. Yeah, the only real difference is you don't vote for president. It's still, you're still a citizen, the same currency, the same passport. So is, is just simply not having a vote for president enough to keep people to move there? It seems like a, you know, obviously you want to be able to vote, but is that the only reason? So if it, if it were to become a state, I don't know if people would move there or not. It's cheap. Um, that might be an issue for them. Would they want a bunch of rich mainlanders moving there, turning Puerto Rico into Florida? Um, I don't know. But uh, you would certainly have to learn Spanish. You, I don't think English is going to get you very far there. Um, AR, thank you again. I appreciate it. Dothan, Alabama, biggest city that isn't a suburb. It does not have an interstate or freeway with ramps. I'll trust you on that. That makes sense. I mean, there's nothing really down here um, near Dothan. It's a decent sized city for there being no major roads anywhere near there. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get here to the beach. People want to get down here. This is all back roads. It takes a while. So um, yeah, not much around Dothan. So that does, that does make sense if that is true. Josh, uh, filming locations for Star Wars, I don't even know where they are. Uh, the only one that I would could think of would be the one at the beginning of the first Star Wars movie. They're out in the desert. I don't know if that's, that might not even be the U.S. I don't know, but I've definitely not been to any of the official ones. Andrew, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, and also for just being with the channel for a long time, I do appreciate the support. I do keep track of who's been making comments and you know for the past couple years and stuff. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, what newest music do I like? Uh, yeah, Krungbin's one of my favorites. Um, uh, the Viagra Boys, kind of a dumb name, but they're they're really good. Um, 
you know, King Gizzard's been around for 10 years now, but that's, uh, they, they've got, what, 25 albums in 10 years, so I, I like them a lot. Um, yeah, not too big on the newest of the pop. I think we're in a bad pop. Pop goes up and down. I think it's kind of, we're in a lull right now. All right. Say something nice about Kansas. No, no. I don't dislike Kansas. I, just, I, I think it's boring, but that doesn't mean it's horrible. Um, I like the sunflower fields when they're in bloom. I went to the, the Great Plains Nature Center, which is in Wichita, right about here. And it's just like a you know a nature center with a boardwalk and little displays. And I was there when the, the sunflower field was all in bloom. It was really, really, really nice. I gotta get catch up. I'm way behind. I have been to Michigan a lot. It's probably the state that um, I'm the most familiar with that I've never lived in. Is that right? Yeah. Well, no, probably Georgia. But it's it's one of the states that I'm the most familiar with that I have not lived in. Yeah, Pennsylvania is relatively inexpensive. Um, Philadelphia is pretty cheap for a city of its size. Pittsburgh is really cheap. The other cities in the state are really cheap. I mean, most of them for a reason. But Lancaster is nice, and it's um, low housing costs. Bethlehem is nice. So there's Easton. Um, you know, York is York's pretty rough. Harrisburg is pretty rough. Scranton and Wilkes-Barre are really rough. But, I mean, yeah, you can get some good... good uh, Good deals on property in Pennsylvania. It's a much prettier state than it gets credit for. It's just green and hills. It's very nice. These, yeah, these. Uh, most disappointing place I've been to. Um, I might have to think about it, but I, one place I do not like is close to here. It's Gatlinburg. And it's it's a really popular spot. People love it. But the reason why I don't like it is because it's the gateway town to a national park. I mean, you think about all the other gateway towns to national parks. They're really nice little towns. Uh, but Gatlinburg is, I, I mean, it doesn't need to be. It, it's like Wisconsin Dells next to a national park, which, I don't know, I, th I think that's very disappointing. I'd rather see it just a nice town and then have whatever Gatlinburg is just somewhere that isn't next to the national park. But. That might not be the most disappointing, but that's the first one I can think of. Please use sunscreen. Man, I don't get this look by just anything, man. I gotta I gotta take care of by not wearing it. I gotta look. Actually, it's probably these lights. Honestly, I'm uh not as pasty as I look, maybe. But I do have really bright lights here. Kind of like my teeth. I've gotten a lot of comments that my teeth are really white. I'm like, it's the lights. <laughs> I drink so much soda, it's the lights. Um, Randy, any pins for East Texas? There's one, if Tyler, if that counts as East Texas. But Houston is the uh, the only big city in the country where there's no pins on it. And I'll go over the last few pins that were added to it um, at the top of the hour here. There's some good things about Kansas. Um, number two state for beef very important state they do have a lot of issues with drought right now um, western kansas is very dry and it's a very important part of this country agriculturally um, western and central kansas but it's it's been dry i think a lot of the wheat crop was burned lost lost in a grass fire uh, wildland grass fires Uh, cool cover, bro. Uh, to be honest with you, I probably won't do 
individual videos on a Mexican state or a Canadian province? Um, probably not. If I did, it would be, it'd probably need to be Quebec because I, I just said something on Toronto, so it probably wouldn't be Ontario. It would probably be Quebec. I haven't even been to a lot of Western Canada, so I, I would have to go there before I did anything. On. I hope, hopefully we'll be in um, um, parts of Canada later on this year. We'll see. Do I agree with city nerds takes? Uh, I, I think we're, I think I agree with, I, I mean, I haven't watched every single one of his videos, but I, I'm pretty sure we're in general agreement. Um, I can't believe he lives in Las Vegas. I, I found out recently he lives in Las Vegas. I'm like, whoa, that's, <laughs> that caught me off guard because that's usually a city that gets a lot of hate. I mean, I, I don't like Las Vegas and most urban planners don't. So I'd like to ask him, you know, kind of what got him to Las Vegas and if he plans on staying. Um, Uh, Aditya, why are some coastal areas almost always cloudy, but not others? So generally speaking, the, these cooler western coast, west coast cities will often be cloudy. And so I lived here in Monterey, and almost every day of the year, you could, you could guarantee that it was going to be kind of gray, overclass, overcast, um, low stratus clouds. And then by 10 to noon, it, it'd burn off, and then it'd get sunny every afternoon. And then by about 4 p.m., the ocean breeze would come in, it would cool off, and then as the evening went off, it would get gray again. So it would always be terrible for stargazing. It's kind of the same for San Francisco and going up the coast. So what happens is the water here is so cold, and colder water can't hold as much, uh, or you know, colder air can't hold as much water. So you get a lot more condensation and more precipitation on some of these with colder temperatures here. On the East Coast, the water is so warm, you're not going to get, um, I mean, you could get fog, I suppose, but you're not going to get the same type of uh, the low fog like you see on the West Coast. Like you probably have seen photos of San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge just covered in, in fog because um, all the that marine layer here, it's all kind of funneled right through the Golden Gate. And this kind of creates a little microclimate here. And with, with it being so cool, it just can't hold as much. Um, so there's different types of fog, but that, that marine west coast fog is a little different than the the you know the Thule fog you get in the valleys. But um, it has to do with the temperature of the water and just atmospheric temperatures as to why you just have that different cloud and fog situation along the coast. Severa, howdy. Got Denmark there. I, I have been to Slab City. Um, and if you're not, if you're really, uh, Slab City is, it's not a real town. It's like a, it's a collection of RVs and trucks and tents. And it's like a permanent Burning Man. I'm not really that bad, but it's a permanent, semi-permanent kind of camp. Um, it's, there's some documentaries on it. It's just kind of a crazy, almost lawless type thing. But I've been to something near it also. It's it's Bombay Beach. It's like the actual, it's like a, t a real town, I guess you could call it. It's kind of, it's a strange place. Um, it's pe for people that just want to be off on their own, just leave me alone. Just let me just be out here in the desert doing whatever. I don't think California should split, Eric. Uh, I mean, I just, I, I, whenever I hear that, I think it's just kind of silly because how would you split it? Who would decide? I mean, I, I no. A two wheeled adventure, my favorite place to visit within three hours of here. Um, generally speaking, I would say the mountains of North Carolina as in terms of hiking or nature stuff. Uh, cities, both Nashville and Atlanta, are two hours. It's nice to have two really fun big cities close by, to, but be far enough away to not be in them. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff within three hours of here. Um, you know, Northeastern Alabama has some really cool state parks as well. So um, yeah, good, a lot of good quick little day trips from here. 
J.L. Braswell. That's a very interesting question about San Francisco because I'm literally working on something like that right now. Um, so we'll see. I don't have it all. Uh, I'm still working on that. Literally, that's that topic. Hey, Kendall, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep, you know, like I said with that maps video, just if you make a map, just send it to me whenever. It doesn't have to be for a specific video because I'm going to do these probably every three months. And wow, that, that first one that I did with viewer maps, I mean, the next day there was a, a lot of new ones. And I mean, the quality, I mean, they were good in the first one, but wow, there's, it's, the bar was raised with the second round of maps that were sent to me. So um, yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun series. I look forward to seeing um, some really good stuff and hopefully, you know, good map makers get your name out there and maybe somebody can notice you. Uh, Marin, I have not been to San Felipe, but I do know... Um, I do a decent amount of about it. My brother went there a few times. It's just a small town along the Gulf, right here. Um, a lot of gringos, a lot of a uh, lot of a uh, winter. What do you call them? Uh, snowbirds down there. I was in Loreto, which down here, which is a little less known than San Felipe, and it's, it's it was really chill. But um, yeah, I mean, I think Baja is it's great. I mean, it's just this huge piece of land. no one lives there it's like there's a couple million in tawana half million down here at the at the at the cape there's this whole area there's like maybe a hundred thousand people for the whole long area it's just it's kind of like the southwestern u.s just open desert beautiful scenery Tom, favorite state high point. Thank you very much for the super chat. You've been to 37. I have not been to anywhere near that many. I'm not, uh, that's not something I've ever um, made like a, like a thing for me to really do um, was to, to visit all the state high points. Um, there's probably only just a handful that I've been to, honestly. Maybe only five, not that many, honestly. And just the really easy ones too. All right, so Cora, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the map right now. So I'm gonna go over now. See now, what this map behind me is is something I started doing a couple of years ago, and it was a way to kind of just generate a little bit of revenue for the channel. Um, so these pins are something you go on the Patreon page for, and it's five dollars to put a pin place somewhere. If you could live anywhere you want, where could you live? So it's kind of a fun way to to do a fundraiser that was not just you. Know, send me money just something that's kind of cool with it i love having this map on my wall in the basement um, but the problem with it is that i don't want to have to say every single video here's this map and buy a pin for it and all that because i say it very fleeting at the last 20 seconds of a video when no one's watching so but if you don't announce to do it then people don't do it and then there's nothing really to add so i only have a handful from the very from the most recent um live stream back in January. So it was a handful from in January and then none after that. So I'm, um, you know, I don't want to have to always say do it, but if you don't, then you don't get the pin. So anyway, I'm going to go over to some of the ones, that, the, some of the most recent ones. Um, and a couple of really weird things about this round. There's only about 15, but a couple of weird ones. Okay, so Roostom, thank you very much. He's from Sunnyvale, Silicon Valley area, wants to go to Carmel. Stephen, upstate New York. 
Syracuse. That's the first pin for Syracuse. Cody, Lincoln, Nebraska right here. Um, first one for Lincoln. Now, here's where it's interesting. Daniel and Yahir. Yahir, I'm, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce that correctly. They both have one for Oklahoma, one for Tulsa, one for Beaver, little tiny town in the panhandle. This pin here was one of the first five or ten pins like three years ago this was one of the very first one and oklahoma was nothing this whole time and then two in the past few months so that's kind of cool so oklahoma's back in the game all right um anthony from maryland pin in toronto cat from sacramento big sky montana right here it's a little uh, resort area between bozeman and yellowstone um VP and KF cheated. They wanted the pins in their hometowns to represent, but Jackson, Tennessee, and in Sterling, Illinois. Not familiar with that place. I've never been there. Sounds interesting. And the other really weird one. Okay, this is weird. Within two, two of the three pins I received over a couple of months ago were people from Arlington, Virginia that wanted to move to Christchurch, New Zealand. I was like, how, that's weird. How was it two? I was like, is it the same person, different account? But no, it's two different people. So Peter, Arlington, Virginia, a pin in Christ Church. Dan, also from Arlington, a pin in Christ Church, and a second pin for his daughter in La Paz, Bolivia. So uh, some people uh, paid for two pins, but really cool. Two Arlington to Christ Churches <laughs> within a couple of months. Very strange. Um, all right. Kevin from Connecticut to Sarasota down here. We got two pins down there in Sarasota. Uh, John M. He didn't actually ask for a pin. He's supported the channel for a long time. And I put his pin here on the North Shore of Lake Superior, Minnesota. Um, really cool guy. Thank you very much for the support of the channel. So whether or not you wanted this pin, you have it here. So um, Igor. Igor is from I, Kurgan, Russia. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. Uh, pin here in San Diego. Ethan. Uh, Avalon, Newfoundland. Um, Newfoundland doesn't show up on this map here. It's kind of like the world maps without New Zealand. The little <laughs> so maps without Newfoundland, but there is one for Avalon, which is that uh, you know island of Newfoundland. Um, All right, um, Benjamin, two pins, one for Guernsey, England. So in, this, in the English Channel south of uh, England, between England and France, and another one for Seattle, and then Zach for Waimea, Hawaii, which is the north shore of the Big Island. Um, there's several Waimeas, so he gave me the zip code to make sure it was the right one. So, so what these are, are when people sign up for it, they just say, you know, where, if I could live anywhere. So maybe you live here and you want to live there or whatever it is. So the pins just go in your spot. Um, and I have a database of it, just uh, uh, like a, an Excel spreadsheet. And the next video I do on this map is going to be the final one. So there's only going to be one more round of it. Um, I'm going to only make one more announcement for it. And the next video is going to be an actual real video where I go over the final stats and just kind of just all the research of it. So it's really cool. Um, so I'll probably put one more announcement out for it and, uh, yeah, and I'll have the, I'll, I'll also include the international maps as well. So it's not just the U S one. I have one for Europe and the one for the whole rest of the world. Oh, wow. Um, Ben, wow. Thank you very much. That's rather generous. Thank you. Um, wow. Okay. Long road trip from, uh, Southern Ontario to Arizona. Yeah, uh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed your trip. It sounds like a, a nice trip, and I'm, you know, glad to hear that maybe something I said might have, you know, added to your trip. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, uh, I would. Yeah, I would certainly love to do a similar type trip for Canada. There's, you know, tons of national parks that I'd love to see. Um, 
so yeah hopefully you got to see quite a bit that's i mean you can go that part of arizona um monument valley area here you can just hang out all in this four corners but not go to any of the heavily visited parks uh getting away from kind of like the, the rv crowd there's just so much here you can still see the grand canyon still see all the popular spots but then still get away from all of it even though um, you're in the middle of a major tourist area Lynn, thank you very much. I do appreciate the super chat there. I will try to keep it up. Uh, Charles, I don't, the, the difference between Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands is, is simply population. Virgin Islands, I think it's only like 140,000 people there. And that's, that's way too small for a state. I mean, Guam, I think is about the same population. Samoa and then the Marianas are less than 100,000, so. Um, even those other smaller territories combined, I mean, that's kind of what a territory is supposed to be, a small area that can't be its own thing, like Guam or the Mariana Islands that would need kind of a, but Puerto Rico doesn't need that. It's a, it's a big place on its own. It's a big boy on its own. Um, yeah, again, I like to see it as a state, personally. Aaron, there's one pin, I think there's, there's a pin right here, two pins here, the coast of Mississippi, right there. Dustin from Lewiston, Maine. I was, I ate it, is it Pinky D's Poutine Factory? I meant to, sounds, sounds sus, but it was actually really good. Pinky D's Poutine was a, yeah, I mean, I think that was in Lewiston. It might have been Auburn, but. The Battle of Endor. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. That's the one where they're on the things, the go, not the go-cars, the little flying motorcycles or whatever. I'm not much of a Star Wars guy. <laughs> IROC. Uh, yes, San Angelo is a really underrated town. I mean, Texas gets a lot of, you know, mentions in the news and stuff, but San Angelo... You never hear about it. It's just like a hundred thousand people, real chill, laid back. It's not on an interstate. It's you know I twenty here, I ten here. It's in between the two. It's nice area. It's just uh, off the beaten path a little bit. It's west of hill country, so people like the hill country. People from you know Austin go to the nearer parts of it, but the farther away parts of it are a little, a little more interesting. Al, you're right. Ohio is not a real state, and uh, yeah, I, I won't uh, I won't argue with that one. Whatever. I, honestly, in terms of UK, Ireland, Scotland politics, I don't know. After after Brexit, I th thought there was some talk in Scotland of maybe going uh, independent. I don't know. So that's. I'm uh, not qualified to answer that kind of question. I have not seen MF Doom's mural. I don't. I don't know where it is. Uh, I didn't know he was from Atlanta. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Is it safe for a gringo to travel in New Mexico? No, they're gonna get you, man. They're gonna get you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, New Mexico has a lot of issues with poverty and crime. So that's oftentimes what you hear about. Um, it's, you know, more fun and sensationalist to talk about crime. And there's some serious issues in Albuquerque. Um, and some of the smaller towns in this part of the state, it's kind of real roughneck. A lot of uh, barroom brawls and assaults and a lot of, uh, a lot of drugs in some of those small little oil towns. Um, but, I mean... You're fine. It's like if you go to Chicago, you're not going to be buying drugs in the hood. I mean, you, you're not going to be putting yourself in that kind of trouble. So I don't think you're going to be hanging out with some of the, you know, the gang members in Albuquerque, Santa Fe. Um, so, yeah, I, I take it your comment was probably facetious, but just in case.
Greg, where is alt country more popular than Nashville? I mean, historically, Austin was alt country and Nashville was straight country. So Nashville was the perfect gray suits, the, the perfect hat, the elbow patches on the on the elbows, you know, the Austin was the long hair, you know, the getting drunk, you know, or you know, that was the, the outlaw country stuff. Um, but I think Austin's what's happening there is the same as San Francisco. It just used to be a place for hippies and weirdos and burnouts and but then all the tech folks moved there and priced them out. Um, I do find it interesting that a lot of the what is actual country music is now called alt country oftentimes, and then what is called country is really just pop music with southern accent. Marin, uh, I, I actually made a, a meme on a, actually, I have, I'll just go ahead and bring it up. That's one thing I like about leaving the, where did I, I don't know where I put it. Oh, oh what was it called? I can't remember what I called it. Oh no! Oh, here it is. So yeah, here we go. This is a. Uh, this is the meme I made for. For a. Uh, for greater for greater Idaho. This is. So I. It, I mean, it's not going to happen. So I don't. There's so many of these little ideas like, oh, we want to break off of this. We want to join this. We want to. I mean, none of it's going to happen. People just need to. Deal with it. You don't like your governor, then deal with it. You know, don't try to change state. I don't know. I'm I'm against the whole changing state borders and dividing states up and all that kind of stuff. It's not really my thing. Um, Jefferson. I have a video about Jefferson. I think the issue there is just it. It couldn't make it on its own. It's just there's just nothing there. Um, so it's tough. It's uh, you know, everyone. But I mean, I would love it if my house was its own state, you know, but you can't just have every group of people that wants to be their own state, be their own state. House boating. Uh, no, uh, that's not really my thing. Um, yeah, I have nothing against it. Just not, not something I do. Garneau. Um, you know, the Ozarks, this area here, southwestern Missouri here, northwestern Arkansas. Um, this is a big area of karst, which is the, the limestone. You have a lot of caves. So Arkansas is a big state for caves. Missouri here. Um, this part of the state in Arkansas is called the NWA or Northwest Arkansas. This is where you have most of the population growth. It's Fayetteville, Springdale, Bentonville, which is the corporate headquarters for Walmart. Um, but yeah, real pretty area, this area right here in Oklahoma, there's a little bit of growth right here on the border. Um, I'm not sure if it's people that are commuting into Arkansas because Arkansas is kind of a high tax state. So I'm not sure if people are rather live in Oklahoma, um, but yeah, real pretty area. It's an underappreciated area. Um, I saw somewhere that Springfield, Missouri is one of the highest crime rates in the country. I'm not sure what's going on there. My guess will be drugs. That's my go-to guess. If, if a town that's not that big has really bad crime problems, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and guess drugs. But yeah, uh, I, I do like the area. It's very pretty. Um, Branson's not really my uh, cup of tea in terms of a tourist destination, but um, yeah, I like it. I rock. Why rock? Yeah, Utah is great. That's you know, I, I, a question before I, I forgot to answer was my favorite outdoors state is probably Utah. It's just, um, I mean, you get the mountains here, you have the, the desert and the canyons, and it's, it's just beautiful. So I do love the outdoors adventures there. And as long as it's not the middle of summer, it's always a good time to go. It can be January or fall, spring. It's always quite nice. Uh, Mary? I don't think anything will change in the in the Central Valley because of the lake. I mean, just me being honest, it's going to be dried up and used by the farmers, and it's probably not going to come back. 
it's, it's a, it was never a permanent lake. It was never always there, uh, but it's just been gone for so long because of all the water being drawn. Um, I don't think there's, it's not a useful spot for a reservoir. I know there was talks about maybe putting some levees up and this making it like a reservoir almost, but it's not really well suited for that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I don't think that will actually have a huge impact on the valley. Maybe it will, but I don't. I don't think it will. Uh, Jail. Uh, when I travel, I do have a good camera. That's I actually just a camera, and then my phone, but. More often than not, I end up just using the phone if I'm walking. If I'm, say, walking around the city, I don't really always want to carry my tripod and good camera. I'll use that more for outdoors uh, landscape shots. But if I'm walking around the city, it's usually going to be uh, just my regular phone, um, which is not a great camera. I'm hopefully get a new phone with the number one consideration being having a good camera. But. Greg, Little Rock. Uh, yeah, Little Rock was rough. I, I was there last year. Um, I was very shocked with the amount of visible homelessness. Now, I know homelessness is bad all throughout the country, and some cities like Chattanooga and others just try to hide the homeless, put them away, and, you know, behind trees and wooded areas and in warehouses and stuff. But Little Rock, it was out there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a poor city, and you know the the economic growth in the state is not it's not in Little Rock. It's in that northwestern area. Uh, Kraus, I think I probably do have a photographic memory. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I do remember a lot. Um, and I don't know if that helps me as a geographer. I don't know. It probably does. Um, uh, Jared, the most dangerous situation you've been in while traveling. Um, I don't really think I've ever been in a really dangerous. Uh, there was a time where I think I was probably almost mugged in St. Louis. It was like three in the morning. And we're coming back from a couple of bars and uh, two of my friends went off in the behind the dumpster to, you know, relieve themselves. And I think a dude came like straight for me in the middle of a parking lot. And I'm like, this guy's walking toward me fast at three in the morning. And then right as my friends came around the corner, this dude just like quick 90 degree turn went away. I was like, dude, I was about to get mugged. But that's, I don't know, I, I try to stay, you know, Keep my wits about me and not do anything too crazy when traveling. Um, kind of get an idea of what, you know, things to avoid and, you know, places to not venture off to by yourself at night. But um, yeah, there's been some weird things, but nothing I wouldn't say too dangerous. Called Keatna, Alaska. Is that the that's outside of Denali National Park? I think that's the kind of a nice little town there. I think. Uh, favorite Oregon city. Um. I don't know. I, I generally like the Oregon coast. I don't know about any one particular town, but even though I'm from California, Oregon is one of the states I'm the least familiar with. Almost all of my trips did this kind of stuff, east, maybe northeast, but I rarely went north. So I, Oregon and Washington are the two states I'm the least familiar with of the ones I've been to. Uh, John, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always up for doing collaborative videos with people who are similar, you know, similar genre, similar feel. Um, so it, it's, 
yeah, I, yeah, I, I would certainly be up for it. Um, I don't, I don't view other channels as like, you know, competition. I think it's just all, you know, the good ones are good, and the, you know, some, some are not, but most of them are pretty good. Joe, uh, I don't know of any specific off-grid groups. Um, I would I would imagine there probably are just because we're so near the mountains. There's a lot of uh, a lot of survivalist um, stuff. I don't know of any particular group. Uh, AC. Um, yeah, I th I think with San Francisco, it's the same as with anywhere. It's the media is going to focus on the stuff that's going to get the most views and clicks. And so for cities where it's crime, you know, chalk outlines are always good for views and clicks. Um, crying mom, you know, that's that, that kind of stuff that the media always goes for. Uh, San Francisco, it's going to be the homeless people. And, you know, I go to San Francisco almost every year, you know, and I, yeah, there's a lot of homeless, but I mean, it's a relatively small part of town. Yeah, it's gotten worse. The homeless situation has expanded past the Tenderloin. But it's it's not the apocalyptic like I mean it's crazy how it's portrayed and just how many people believe it's like that it's it's kind of sad just how many folks actually think it's all the tenderloin or that most of it is like that um, but uh, Filippo thank you very much um, for the super chat sorry I'm just getting caught up. Um, Yes, I'm glad you like maps. I love maps too. Yeah, I don't know what is up with Bucky's. Why do people love this Bucky's place? It's just a. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's just a. It's a truck like a travel center. It's, but it's got like, a store. It's, it just adds time to your road trip. <laughs> I don't know, but people love it. People get excited when there's a new Bucky's opening up. Mirage, I have not been to Mexico City. I would love to go. Um, it's one of my top places uh, for me to want to visit. And I'll probably get there relatively soon. But, um, yeah, I was, I was, there was a chance I was going to be actually going there this fall, uh, maybe in November. But uh, probably isn't going to happen, but relatively soon I would, I would love to go. Curtis, I, I like Evansville. It's, it is kind of bland, but for, it's a small town for what it is. It's actually kind of exciting. You think about it's what is Vandenberg County has 200,000 people maybe. And it's you know, downtown Evansville is pretty, pretty lively for a town that side, I think. But if you're from there, I mean, anybody who thinks where they're from is boring and awful. Tohoku, City Geek. I like City Geek as well. Um, I did a little little cameo on one of his videos once. Uh, you know, good channel. He's that knows a lot more about the history of cities than I do for sure. Uh, Shivam, I I usually do it like this. So if I need to go into a photo or something off the desktop or something, I'm not just in the just screen capture. I mean, I don't have anything weird up on my, <laughs> so if I had all my <laughs> tax info or something there, I wouldn't, but yeah, so I, I don't go off of it too often, but I just like to be able to get to other stuff if I need to. Uh, Miguel, I've only been to eight countries and half of those are in the Caribbean. So, um, but I do have a really, really big trip in February planned. i I'll announce it uh, in the coming months, but I have a really cool other part of the world trip coming up. So, um, but I'm just now kind of entering the international travel phase of my life. I'm finally getting to the point where I have both the money not and time because, I mean, not that we're rich by any chance, but, you know, not having kids gives you 
you have a little extra money. So, um, and that's not why we don't have kids, but because we don't, it's, we put a lot of the money towards travel and I'm just looking forward to seeing a lot of other parts of the world. And there's going to be a lot more international content starting next year. It's going to be really, it's going to, yeah, I'm excited because I, I love driving the U S and Canada. Um, and I will continue to do that, but I still want to be able to see as much of the world as I can. Aaron, Eureka. Yeah, Eureka is not the... If you want to go to sunny California, Eureka is not the town to go to. But if you want to get a house cheap on the California coast, Eureka is the town to do it. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of houses there that were just let to go into terrible condition, but you can get house there on the coast for relatively inexpensive. Uh, Charles, yeah, Monterey is very nice. Um, and the only problem with Monterey is it's expensive, but I did have a job that paid well enough to afford to live there, but um, my wife is from South Carolina, so Southern, Southern girls don't want to leave the South, so it's a... Um, it's fine, you know, uh, but it's once you leave Monterey or a place that's really expensive, you, you can't go back. There's no way. You can go from Monterey to anywhere in the U.S. or anywhere in the world, really, um, but you can't go back to Monterey. It's like it's a one-way door, so it's a – but it was nice. It was fun. I loved it living there. Uh, Andrew Martineau. Um, well, those are, those are two different issues. The crime – Crime rate in San Francisco, people are surprised. It's actually below average. Um, I think people, it's got high like shoplifting and like car break-ins. It's bad for that. But in terms of violent crime and assault, since it's actually one of the safer cities. Um, so, but in terms of businesses leaving, I mean, it's expensive. Why, you know, there's office space. It's very expensive there. You don't, all of those companies that are in the city don't need physical office space. I mean, the types of jobs that went to San Francisco were the types of jobs are the easiest to work away from home. So, um, and that's why I say that Austin is doing kind of the same thing because they're bringing in a ton of jobs that can be done anywhere. And now the Austin's getting really expensive. I think you might see some of those. Of course, the geography there is different. You can more space, all that. But um, I think with San Francisco, I like, if people keep leaving, it's going to get cheaper and cheaper. So there's a certain, I don't know where the baseline would be, but if you could get houses there for $400,000, there'd be a waiting list 10 miles long to move back. So it's, it's going to, if people keep leaving, it'll get to the point where it's affordable to some people to move back. So I don't think it'll ever get to the point where it's like Detroit or Cleveland were in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. But, um, you know, and maybe you know, it, you have to look at the positive. It might be good for it in the long run to get some of the, the high, the stuff that made it so expensive there out. Um, I don't know. That's a, that's a whole different thing. But I do have topics on, on the video about that coming up. Uh, Randall, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, I don't really care too much about regional there's that's one thing i've noticed from road tripping the past few years is there's just there's more like this is this state's type of truck stop or travel thing and you know you, there's this one for like tennessee's is called weigels and then you have up in pennsylvania you have the the sheets and the the wawa and you got the i mean but like they're so geographically like <laughs> they're so proud of it it's kind of funny but for me it just comes down to What's right there when I need to stop? A lot of times it's, um, I drink Coke Zero, so I need places that have Coke Zero is going to get my stop. Um, but there's one particular one I like a lot. It's called Russell's Travel Center. It's on I-40, right about here, right as you cross from t Texas Panhandle into New Mexico. It's in New Mexico. It's like a car museum. It's like 50s and 60s cars inside the gas station. It's really, really strange, but... Um, <laughs> yep 
Yeah, Elizabeth, Pittsburgh is very is very cloudy. Um, Seattle is very cloudy November to April, but it's mostly just blue skies throughout the summer and early fall. But I mean, Pittsburgh, it's going to be cloudy almost every day at some point. It's just the topography. There's just all kinds of atmospheric movement, and it's often overcast. And it can keep it a little more humid than you might think. Um, but the temperatures aren't too high, so it's going to be you know 80 and humid. Uh, with it cloudy and a little bit of sprinkles and you're going to get some, but I still like it. Um, I can handle that more than extreme cold or uh, lake effect snow. <laughs> a bachelor party weekend for geographers. I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can help you on that one. Yeah, Seattle, um, in terms of its annual rainfall, is not, I mean, it's high, but it's actually higher right here. So the western slope of the southern Appalachians here is, I mean, it rains a lot. So where we live, it's we get 60 inches of rain here a year. So that's what, 25 centimeters a year? Um, no, 20 centimeters. That's uh, 150 centimeters a year. So that's that's a lot for... I'm not sure exactly what Seattle gets, but it's not, it's about the same or even a little bit less. Now, Kraus, I like Sacramento. I think it's underappreciated. I think for the longest time, people on the coast always, oh, Sacramento, the valley, it's cow towns, a bunch of rednecks. Um, but I think people are realizing that, you know, what's interior California is much more like what all the rest of the country is. So Sacramento is much more like a regular type city in other areas as opposed to like San Francisco. So I think um, a lot more folks are starting to realize it's a good spot. And that's it's been growing. So even with all the people leaving San Francisco, uh, Sacramento has been growing quite a bit. Um, and it's still reasonably affordable. It's getting, it's getting up there. Houses are about the same as Nashville. So it's you know, it's 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 getting expensive. It's that was one place you could count on being kind of cheap when the Bay Area was expensive, and it's certainly cheaper, but it's not. Yeah, it's not cheap, but I do like it. I think it's underappreciated. It's a great city for walking. If you live in the downtown Midtown area, um, it's it you can easily get by there with walking and biking and just maybe using a car for an occasional uh, errand. Thank you, Blair. Uh, yeah, this shirt, I've had it for a while now. I've, I've, it's, it's survived. Huh. Um, all right, so... Let me, I think I'm caught up with the super chats. All right. Um, yeah, Alabama's uh, High Point Mount Chiha is a, uh, yeah, it's really easy to get to. It's one of the easier ones. It's right about here. Um, you can basically just drive up to the, the point. So it's not, it's not the most uh, exciting getting to it, but it is a nice spot. Favorite national park, uh, probably just because of how well I know it, I'd say Sequoia, Kings Canyon, just because I've been there so many times. I know some of the, you know, not so well used trails and stuff. So I just, I like kind of getting into, getting into the depths of a national park because it's a lot of wilderness, but most of the people stay on just the main trails and main parts of the park. Uh, Ryan, the the 
both the pins for Mississippi are Ocean Springs, or one's Ocean Springs, the other one I think is Long Beach, I think is what it's called. Maritime content. Uh, I don't know if I can give you much maritime content. Uh, uh, Wanker Tanker. Favorite stretch of coastline. Um, I mean, I, I mean, the big Cercos is it's really well known. Um, Maybe not quite as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not quite as extreme or not quite as, you know, breathtaking, beautiful as the Outer Banks um, on this map. It's not a, you can't drive it, but you can drive down there. I think it's a really cool drive. You can cast a ferry uh, back to the mainland there. Um, yeah, the, the, the main coast is really nice. I mean, you drove along the, the coast there, so. Uh, the, along the UP of Michigan is also really nice too. It's on the Lake Superior shoreline. Uh, Kraus, yeah, I, I do like the driftless area. It's just this area around here. Um, a lot of rolling hills. Uh, it's where the end of the, the glacial, uh, during the last ice age, kind of the, as far as the glaciers got here. And this was the driftless area because it didn't have any of the, the glacial drift. So. Uh, but very pretty. Uh, it's Dubuque, I think, is the, the largest city in that area. Um, yeah, very pretty. No, no major interstates going through it, so it's a little, little off the, little off the radar a little bit. Yeah, I mean, territories are are essentially colonies. I mean, that's that's kind of semantics on that. Kevin, uh, I was talking about the total eclipse today. And if you want to go to the best spot for it, it's going to be here. Because the time of the year, I can't remember exactly when it's going to be, May or whatever. Um, there's a good chance there'll be cloud cover. I think it's going to go like this. Um, this is, if you, want to, if you want the path of totality where it's most likely to be sunny, it's going to be here, the middle of nowhere. And this is a beautiful part of Texas too, but... Anywhere, any town that's along the path, the hotels are already booked. I mean, the Motel 6s are like 200 bucks for, you know, any of these towns, but there's nothing here. You have to drive there and kind of sit on the side of the road, but you're basically guaranteed to have sunny, for it to be sunny and totality. So that's where I'm going to be. I think it's, I can't remember exactly when it is, but that's when I'm going to be, though. That's that Southwest Texas. Ex fire driver, Lansing, the only state capital that isn't also a county seat. Let me think about that. Well, if we're being semantics, Alaska and Louisiana, but if you're still counting Juneau and Baton Rouge as, you know, is that right? Carson City isn't a county, it's just a city, so that's one. I know, just got to shoot down, got to shoot it down. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of high rises, not just in New York City, but all the just skyscrapers and a lot of big cities, the building itself is, there's just so much office in there that it has its own zip code. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Jared, do you think it'd be worth it to drive the entire length of US-1? I mean, that's the coast. I would say probably no, because a lot of it is, it's going to be just a boring two-lane highway where you're going to be going slow, but you might as well be on the even funkier side road. So um, I don't think that would be a great road trip. Although when I got past New York, I did just follow one instead of 95 to go to some of those New England towns. But I don't think that would be the, the best road trip, honestly. All right, Ryu. Um, yeah, St. George, a lot of lot of growth here. Um, so you got there's a whole bunch of towns like St. St. George, Washington, um, Hurricane, uh, Laverkin. Several. They're all it's kind of merging together. Uh, nice area. It's really really hot. I mean, you know, you kind of assume this will be hot. This will be hot, but this is almost as hot. So you have to really be willing to put up with that. You're close to the national parks. Um, I do find, one thing I do find interesting about the growth here is that this isn't cheap. This is not one of those places people are going to because it's cheap. And Utah is not a low tax state either. So people aren't moving to Utah for low taxes, but there is a lot of growth here. So it's, I'm not sure what the job market there is like, um, but there's obviously some kind of draw. I think a lot of, a lot of retirees are moving there. Um, but yeah, it's a nice area. But it is growing quite a bit. You drive up I-15, it's just built up for um, quite a while, quite a ways. Uh, Mary, I've never heard of the Mormon colonies in northern Mexico. Um, I know that they're, um, I know of, you know, a lot of the LDS a lot of families in Mexico, but I'm not sure about any like specifics. Yeah, uh, and yeah, the the Oklahoma Panhandle is an interesting drive um a lot of ghost towns and a lot of towns that are looks like they're about to become a ghost town pretty soon a uh, couple of interesting towns there as well but uh just kind of interesting when you're here i mean you're at a tri-state point of oklahoma colorado and new mexico and that's kind of a weird uh, trivia because people might not think that those three states have a tri-state point but <laughs> now eric made of 10 now when i want tacos i usually go to tacos 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 four i don't know tacos 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 sounds like a a cheap ripoff of the one in reno Uh, Douglas, yeah, Morocco. We got back from Morocco a couple, three months ago. Fantastic. I mean, while we were there, we were like, all right, we're coming back again at some point, aren't we? So uh, great time. Honestly, we, because we figured we we're going to come back, we liked it so much. We actually removed one thing we were going to see during then. We were going to do four days in Marrakesh, uh, three days in Tangier, and then one, just one day in Rabat, the capital. But we, canceled Rabat just because we're going to come back. So we'll hit Rabat the next time. Um, yeah, we, we loved it. Really, really good time. Um, I'll, I'll have a video coming up on it um, pretty soon. 
it'll be more like a it won't really fit in well with the channel it'll be more like a visitor travel tips from morocco so it'll be a little bit different Uh, the ones I've been to are Wanker, uh, Mexico and Canada, uh, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Barbuda. Um, St. Kitts and Nevis is one country, Antigua and Barbuda is one country, and then Germany um, and Morocco. And then, uh, how many is that? That's seven. I'll, we'll be in uh, Dominica and the Caribbean um, later on this year. So that'll, I've only been to seven. That'll be eight. Actually, because you asked... Passport. <laughs> I have to get a new passport, so nothing's on my passport yet. Yeah, Elizabeth, we have a furry kid too. Having real human kids, I I don't see how y'all can do it. It's expensive. I, man, like there's no way that if my wife and I had the jobs that my parents had, we there's no way we could afford to have three kids and own a house. There's no way. Uh, yeah, that's a whole different thing. But anyway. Oh, what happened there? Uh, Tony Porco, thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, James, why did I pick Tennessee over Texas to live? I, I, that wasn't, it was never a choice. Um, my wife got offered a position in, in Chattanooga, and so we had to decide between Monterey and Chattanooga. Um, you know, I, I think Monterey is the better place to live, but uh, her career was more more worthy of moving for. Um, I think it was probably the best way of putting it. So um, it didn't have to be Chattanooga. It could have. I think we had other options, but in terms of we're both. She's from the south, so we don't like cold. We don't like the snow. Um, I think Virginia might have been an option, um, but we uh, we chose Chattanooga for a specific job, not because we just randomly picked somewhere. Um, but if we, if we were to pick somewhere random in Texas, just to go to Texas, I'd, it would definitely be El Paso for me. Brian, the best taco place in Chattanooga? Um, it's all, I mean, food is always person, personal, but there's a place called Tacos Al Cunao, C-U-N-A-O. Um, it's legit. It's near the airport. It's, yeah, if you're, if you don't speak Spanish, they're, you know, you're, you're weird. It's all, it's, it's a Spanish first place and, you know, white folks and black folks in there are going <laughs> to, they're not the most common uh, customers in there, but it, it's legit. It's like street tacos in Mexico. There's, another, there's a more hipster place called Taco Nuga. Uh, but that's, you know, it's, it's good, but it's, it's definitely more, more hipsterish. The food in Morocco was great. Uh, we had a great, yeah, everything we had was great. The worst meal we had was just okay. That was as bad as it got. The orange juice was, it's worth going back just for the orange juice. It was crazy. All right. Eric lived in the panhandle of Texas. Um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of water shortages there too. Um, yeah, I mean, just that whole Western Great Plains, there's, there's no water, but a lot of need for it. Douglas, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, Kitsap County, Washington, I believe. Is that the is that the one that's the island? Is Kitsap partially island? Um, yeah, I would, I would certainly love to go back up there. I've uh, you've probably noticed that I haven't mentioned St. or St. Louis, Seattle, very much in videos because it's been so long since I've been there, and I can't think of any city that's changed more in the past ten years than Seattle. So. Um, it's been 20 years since I've been there, so I, don't, I haven't talked much about it. Um, so would love to get back. It's just it's so far. Like to do a road trip, just to even include Seattle, you're, you're going so far out of the way starting from here. Uh, 
Uh, hello, Douglas. Thank you for the, the super chat. Yeah, I, I like to do fun little videos ranking things that are not important. I like to do those about once a quarter. So I might have one like that coming up. Um, yeah, those are just kind of fun, silly things where, you know, people, those things, who cares, right? Who It doesn't matter. But yeah, people get all riled up about <laughs> stuff that, you know, their state nickname or their, you know, their state welcome sign kind of stuff. So. Jeremiah, actually, that is probably the best thing about Chattanooga is the fact that it is a public internet. So you may have heard that Chattanooga has, if not the fastest, just about the fastest internet in the world. And it's because it's it's a public utility. So everywhere else, it's Comcast or AT&T or Verizon or some company controls it. But here, it's it's a public utility. And with it being public, there's no, there's no breaks. You know, it's just they let it go. So it's kind of like having a an automotive term like a limiter on your engine to keep it from going too fast is kind of what Comcast and those companies do. But with, with it being a public utility, there's no, I mean, I think there literally is a cap, but it's, it's so high you will never use it. So um, we have really good internet and we're probably paying a lot less than you are too for, I think it's like 50 bucks a month for like, dude, it's, it's really, really good internet. So if you do online video gaming, and somebody from is in your group from Chattanooga and somebody's server is slowing it down. It's not the person from Chattanooga. But I didn't know that it was the only place that has that though. So um, yeah, it's Verizon and AT&T have a, they got some money for lobbying. So there's, there's no reason why and everybody would want what we have. No, nobody complains. You can have, yeah, nobody complains about the internet here. That's one thing that's, Really nice. Uh, the legend, worst towns in Ontario and Quebec. I, I couldn't tell you for sure, but if if I had to guess, let's go for a quick guess. It'd be old Niagara Falls right there. Um, Niagara Falls, Ontario is pretty rough. It's probably the only part of the U.S. Canadian border where the Canadian size works. <laughs> um, Yeah, Maryland's nickname. I'm not. I, I'm not sure if that was in reference to the Mason Dixon line, why it's called that. But um, yeah, it's not one of the better state nicknames. And yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, Ru Runigate. Um, a lot of the time, a lot of, after the COVID started, the media were talking about a lot of people are going to move to Chattanooga for that reason, because of the internet. And it is really good, but I don't think it's a reason to move here, though. It's not like it's so much better that it's worth packing up and moving here for. But if you do heavy, like your heavy video stuff, you're using a lot of bandwidth and maybe, but I, I mean, I, I think I use more than average bandwidth and i don't i i could do so much more so um but it, it is a reasonably cheap place to live for you know the uh work from home because this is an area where the houses are they look cheap on you, you go online they're cheap but it's the wages are really low so if you're able to bring out of area wages here it can be pretty cheap Uh, Boss King, um, I don't like that drive up to Nashville. Um, and it's really only because when you almost get to Nashville, the suburbs are all growing to the southeast. So Nashville's here and we're here and the suburbs of Nashville are all growing southeast. So you get the, the suburban traffic way before you get to Nashville. So I don't like that drive. It's a pretty drive. It's from a scenery standpoint. It's very nice to go through the Cumberland Plateau, some nice road cuts. Um, but uh, the traffic is in Nashville is getting kind of gnarly. Um, but there's a big, as a way around it, if you're going to go to Memphis, not having to 
um, go through Nashville. I'm trying to skip it. Uh, Asa, thank you very much. Um, you've been with the channel for a while, so I appreciate the support. Um, if if we move, it's not going to be because of me, probably, because I just I do this and things I can do from home. My wife's career is more tied to needing to needing to be in a place specifically. So um, I'm I'm certainly up for moving. We've lived here for 16 years, which is for me that's you know that's too long. There's so many places to live. Um, but we're not actively looking to move, but I certainly wouldn't be against it. Oh, okay, so the old line is, goes, okay, much before Mason Dixon. Yeah, Bosking, I think I-70 across Colorado is really pretty. So once you get to this part of Colorado, the whole drive is really, really nice. I mean, just the rest stops. I mean, the rest stops are like state parks in other states. So it's it's that's a very nice drive for interstate. Oh, I am Virginia. You're moving to Maine. Cool. Yeah, I love Maine. We're, we'll be there pretty soon. Um, yeah, I mean, I went there for the first time two years ago. Um, I just fell in love immediately. I just, it's kind of a, it's just a different place. People are kind of weird. I, I liked it. Uh, I really like Portland. That's Portland might be my favorite city, like a, my favorite, like, it's nice. It's I, I like it a lot. Um, so I'm not sure where you're moving in Maine, but hope you enjoy it. If you're from Virginia going to Maine, and it's not too far, I guess, you can drive it in a half a day or a day. A Jung one, um, it depends on the, a lot of the photos are mine. A lot of them are stock photos I paid for. Um, and a lot of them were just Creative Commons people's stupid photos they put on TripAdvisor, Expedia, or whatever. But um, depends on what they are. Generally speaking, if they look really nice, then they're probably not mine. Um, if it's cities, street scenes and cities, those are usually mine. Uh, but the uh, anything drone footage, uh, anything aerial, that's those aren't mine. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it just depends. Um, but it's probably about. Maybe 50-50. Depends on the type of video, too. If it's a, if it's one about other places outside the U.S., and it's going to be almost all other people's photos. Lloyd, the drive from Cincy to Toledo. Um, not really. It's not a great drive. <laughs> I usually stop at a Skyline Chili or a Gold Star or something along the way. But as far as the drive goes, it's not kind of a boring drive, really. You go through Lima and... How does that in there? Bowling Green. It's yeah, it's not the greatest, not the greatest drive in the world, but it's not horrible. I don't want to see. All Ogre Lords, what is my favorite and least favorite thing about Nebraska? Um, I like Nebraska. It's one of my, uh, you know, probably my favorite state in the Great Plains, and it's just a kind of a forgotten state a lot of times. So my my favorite thing about it is just that it is kind of forgotten, but um, the western half of the state is, this is some empty area. I mean, this is some of the most sparsely populated part of the U.S., and it's probably the only sparsely populated part that's not high mountains or extreme desert or a swamp it's like i mean there's no water there but there's no real physical barrier to why there's no people there but i like the towns scotts bluff and shadron uh, nice what i don't like about it um 
I don't like how it's one of the 13 states that taxes Social Security. So if you're retired, you're still paying income tax. And that's not many states do that, but 13 do, and Nebraska is one of them. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's kind of kind of rough when like that. But, I mean, you know, I like Nebraska. I think it's a pretty cool state. I like Omaha. I like Lincoln. Um, yeah, so, but it is a kind of a, it's also a relatively high tax state, but a lot of the Great Plains states are kind of high tax because they can't rely on tourism and other things like Florida can just do sales tax and rental car taxes and hotel occupancy tax because visitors. But so Nebraska, you know, high has a relatively high income tax, really high property tax. Um, I saw somebody, Bisbee, where did I see something? Somebody had a question. Oh, yeah, Rob. I have been to Bisbee. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, it's, it's you're so close to the Mexican border, but you, it doesn't feel like it. So you're right about here. It's near Tombstone, which is like the, the old West Town, which I think is it's kind of a cool little, you know, cheesy tourist town. But you wouldn't think you're on the border. Anywhere else along the border, you know you're close to Mexico. Bisbee, you you would think you're near Santa Fe or, you know, you would think you're in a, you know, Sun Valley or Jackson. That's kind of how it feels. Um, but you're just a few miles from Mexico. Um, major wildfire hazard. It, it'd be a nice place to live, but you really have to be careful with your wildfire hazard. Um, yeah, you need to have a nice defensible break. Good, at least, at least 50 yards, 50 meters, um, I would think of. Uh, defensible break. Uh, Johnny, I've never driven I-40 all the way across Tennessee, but the state is shaped so weird. I mean, this is Bristol to Memphis. That's, I mean, that's so long. That's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's long. So like the, the thing you might have heard you know, it's from Memphis to the other end of Tennessee is the same distance as that part of Tennessee to Canada. So it's just a weird shaped state. But I've never driven across the entire thing in one stretch just because I live, you know, halfway between. Um, M. Gaboski, do I prefer Colorado or Oregon? Uh, you know, again, Oregon, I'm not as familiar with it. So I would say Colorado just because I'm just more familiar with it. And I really like the the U.S. 50 cities, little towns here, Montrose, Gunnison, Salida. Um, I like the Oregon coast and the valley. Uh, not many folks live out here, but I'm just not as familiar with it. Um, Oregon, for me, has a more agreeable climate, but that's going to be a, a preference for each person. You don't get this anywhere near as much snow unless you're in the mountains. And the state is relatively mild during the winter. Yeah, Bosking. Actually, that's the one thing I probably should have mentioned. The worst thing about Nebraska is that drive across I-80 is pretty rough. I think Nebraska is a prettier state than it gets credit for, but you're not going to see it from I-80. <laughs> I know. Ow, people people do hate Skyline Chili. I think I think why a lot of people like or hate it because they're thinking the word chili. They're thinking Texas chili. You stick a fork in it and it stands up. Or, you know. But it's 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 runny chili. It's more like a hot dog style chili. Um, I, yeah, I think it's terrible, but I love it. But actually, the one I like the most is called. Um, it's not even in Ohio. It's called a uh, Dixie Chili. It's in Kentucky. There's a couple of them, and that's the one I like to go to the most if I'm hungry at the time I'm passing through there. Um, hold on a second. Yeah, um, I am Virginia. Yeah, Congaree National Park is really cool. Um, I lived in Columbia, and it's only like maybe 20 minutes out of town. Really nice, really nice place. I, when I was living there, it was called Congaree Swamp National Monument. And then they changed it to Congaree National Park. Very nice. It's a boardwalk trail. Um, so even when it's flooded, you can still walk around. Uh, 
you'll see some little gators you'll see some hogs maybe you probably don't want to see those but really nice park and it's very lightly visited for it being outside of the city but it's just not on that tourism road trip path of people that do national park hopping it's just kind of in a weird spot so but if you're in south carolina people know to go to charleston myrtle beach you know maybe they go to you know somewhere else on the coast but check out congaree swamp it's really cool Eric made of tin. Yeah, if you if you like zoos, the one in Omaha is like. I've i last time I was there, probably twenty sixteen ish. It was a huge renovation. Like they were doing something major, major to it. I don't know what they were doing. I'm sure it's done by now. But um, I think they were going to have like a giant, like a square mile or more, just like open Serengeti type thing. I don't know. Uh, but it seemed like a pretty cool, cool spot. <laughs> yeah, Kansas and Oklahoma do do have toll roads. Um, yeah, I, I think toll roads are creeping their way into everywhere across the U.S. now. I, there are places that didn't have them before, but Tennessee is going to start having toll roads. Uh, so, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. Andrew went to a Pride Month festival in Colorado City, Arizona. And there's a microbrewery. Wow, it has changed a lot. That's a big change. I've been there three times. I mean, that place was weird. I was, the first time I went there, that guy Warren Jeff, the cult leader, was still running the town. And it, you could tell it was creepy. The second time I went there, he had been arrested, but he was still kind of running the town from jail. And then the most recent time, it still seemed kind of weird. Um, so that's, it seems like it's, <laughs> I think a lot of the folks that live there, a lot of the, the fundamental LDS moved to a different town. So I think there's some other town that's now like the new Hilldale, but I don't know where it is exactly. Uh, Jelly Boy, I don't really go to zoos. I'm not really a zoo guy, but the Omaha one is one of the special ones. Um, Columbus and Columbus, Ohio and Columbia, South Carolina are a couple of the other really good ones. San Diego, of course. Carissa, yeah, that bartender. I remember that guy. Wow, am I caught up? I think I've caught up. Look at that. I've caught up. So. All right. Um, yeah, I'll watch your dog while, while you're in Canada. Sure. Yeah, the, the Tennessee toll roads are awful because it's not a real toll road. They're just building a lane to the far left that's going to be super expensive so you can skip the traffic and it's expensive too it's gonna to be like 20 bucks i did that going across the dallas fort worth metroplex i didn't know how expensive it was going to be there was horrible bumper to bumper traffic starting west of fort worth and i was going east of i was going through the entire metroplex and i was like man i i can't i can't it was going to be like over an hour i was like i can't i can't take this much time I took the, the express, the bill was like $25 to go. I mean, for just maybe 10, 15, 20 miles, it was, I couldn't believe how expensive it was. So basically it's just for 
rich people that don't want to get stuck in traffic. So they build just one lane just for the rich people. And then the rest of us are going to be stuck in the, with the peons. Like, cause after I got that bill in the mail, I was like, I'm not getting on the Texas express roads again, 25 bucks for just, yeah. Yeah. That, it's, it's all plate readers now too. It's just kind of, you know, big brother is when you get that bill from New York bridge, service or whatever it is and it's, it's like yeah uh ryan i've done some outdoor hiking in oklahoma um black mesa state park here is really cool it's an easy hike um but where i've done most of the hiking in the state is down here and this is really pretty. This is if you were to see pictures of this, you probably wouldn't guess Oklahoma first. It's very, very pretty. Um, some genuine wilderness out there too. So I've done some good hiking and canoeing. And there's another little spot here called Lake Eufaula. Um, I've camped there a lot, and there's a really cool lake there, and it's nice for um, paddling. It's not really a hiking area, but but Oklahoma, much much prettier state than you might think. I mean, it's got some boring stuff too, but. Brad P, best nature areas in the southeast. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful stuff in the southeast, whether it be the beaches or the mountains. There's no shortage. I mean, there's some, I like swamps too. A lot of folks don't give swamps much time of day, but um, yeah, I mean, there's the south is, there's a lot of pretty stuff. I mean, some of the uh, coastal belt areas are not the most exciting, but really anywhere in the mountains or some of these coastal areas here. Um, yes in terms of aquariums chattanooga here actually has what's considered one of the best ones it's really nice i've had a, a membership to it a couple of times you can just go whenever uh kalispell no there are pins for alabama got one here for huntsville one here this is Lake, I can't remember the name of the lake. Lake, can't remember. Pickwick Lake. Pickwick Lake, and then this is Birmingham. So you got three for Alabama. This one, it's not Mobile, but it's right next to Mobile. I uh, can't remember what it's called. Sims? S Y M M E S? Um, no, I don't know. But those are the ones for Alabama, only two for Mississippi on the coast. Did I just see somebody say they're moving to Irmo or moving from Irmo? So, so James, uh, so Irmo, South Carolina, is a suburb of Columbia, northwestern suburbs. Um, when I was going to school there, that was like the big um, new suburb growth area, the big new mall, all that stuff was out there. So moving up to Greenville. I'd say that's probably a step up, I don't know, in my opinion. I like Greenville a lot. I can see why it's been growing so much. I do like Columbia, but if I were to live in Columbia, I'd be in the city, maybe like Shandon area. Um, yeah, so that'll be, I uh, hope you enjoy it. I'm imagining if you're from Irmo, Columbia area, you're probably are familiar with the upstate, so you know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, Bill Brown, I don't, I don't think heat is going to keep people away. I mean, look at the places that are growing right now. It's really hot. I'd imagine right now it's probably pretty hot in good old St. George, Utah, we were just talking about. So, um, I think, I mean, whenever air conditioning became like a ubiquitous thing in the early 20th century, that's when people were like, okay, we can move south now. But I think as long as people have their air conditioning, they're going to be okay with it, um, uh, you know, being hot. I think <clears throat> something I haven't heard many people talk about is how, you know, California is so expensive because of 
the weather. It's so nice there, but I think with so many people just being indoors all the time, there's less, you know, people are less willing to pay a premium for outdoor climate. Um, so I, I, I don't think, I don't, I don't see Arizona slowing down growth because of the heat or the water or Texas. I mean, Texas is probably have higher heat index than most of Arizona, but that's not slowing it down. I mean, Austin has, I mean, Austin has the heat of the Southwest with the humidity of the Southeast and it's not slowing down. So um, maybe if it gets, you know, 40, 50 years, and it's really bad. But I think for the short term future, I don't think heat or water, whether or not they should be considerations, I don't think they will be. Why is Oklahoma so cheap? I don't know why Oklahoma is so cheap. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's not. Yeah, I, I don't. I think it's undervalued, um, but I think a lot of stuff that is a lot of the jobs in Oklahoma are by companies in Texas. So, kind of like Louisiana, a lot of those oil companies are based in Texas, so the profits go back to Texas. Um, there's probably some of that in Oklahoma, maybe that's not as high a paying jobs, but um, you know, I, I think it's very underrated, kind of like New or like a Nebraska. Uh, Kevin, New Orleans. I mean, I think New Orleans is probably the ultimate love to visit, hate to live there place for me at least. Uh, it would drive me crazy living there, but I, it's, it's a great time to visit. Um, of course, if you were just there meeting in June, I can think of better times to be there. But um, that's probably the worst heat and humidity, I think. I've, I've been to most places where it's like the at the worst time. And I think New Orleans summer, the worst, is that's pretty bad. But, yeah, I like it. A lot of fun. Uh, great food, great music. There's always, there's always somebody playing music somewhere. Um, that's one thing I like about New Orleans and Nashville and Austin. They're just You can always hear some music being played. Hey, Devin, you can just uh, contact me and I'll, I'll move it for you. El Greco. Um, I, I watched City Nerd. We talked about him a little bit. Uh, and City Beautiful. Those are the two ones that I probably watched the most. Um, uh, City Geek is a good channel, but he's not really urban planning. But it's, you know, it's a good channel. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, I don't, there's no, there's none of the city planning channels I dislike. There's none of them like, oh man, that one sucks. I think they're all pretty good. There are some channels in the genre that I think are, you know, not the, the greatest, but the urban planning ones I think are all pretty good. Hey, right, Juan Pedro, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I know you're here, even though you're not commenting. So, from Argentina, love to go there. I'm hoping to get some South America travel coming in in the next couple of years. Right now, what I'm doing is re-upping my... I, took, I studied French in high school. I've been just practicing getting back on to French and next year I'm going to be traveling places that you have to speak French so that's why I'm going all in on that and next year French speaking places and the, hopefully after that Spanish speaking places um, Ryan top three countries for fascinating geography um, I don't know. Um, 
just from a, a big country standpoint, um, I mean, I mean, Canada is kind of the easy, easy answer. But I mean, something like Japan, I'm very fascinated with because it's a terrible piece of land. It's like the worst chunk of land on Earth. So if you were an alien species coming to an empty Earth looking for a place to settle, Japan would be the last piece of land you choose. So um, from its, you know, terrible soil to natural disasters, I, and just to see that country just had to be so innovative to make it with that lousy piece of land. Um, so I'm just kind of fascinated by how that, having that land kind of contributed to the culture that's there. Um, but also a place like Iceland, it's just an I island of fire, volcanic activity that you can see all the time. So, um, yeah, but, I mean, anywhere, almost anywhere is going to be fascinating to me in terms of physical geography, the biggest caves, I mean, Victoria Falls, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Um, Sousa, I don't, I don't know how big Greenville can get. I mean, you probably don't want to hear this if you live there, but there's, it can get a lot bigger. Um, it's a very strange metro where it's, it's not just Greenville. There's Anderson, Greenville, Greer, Spartanburg, and they're not directly adjacent. So there's space between a little bit and a little bit of space. So it's like a a chain of towns no one is that big but they all add up to about a, over a million people so there's a lot of space there it can handle a lot more i'm not sure how much longer it will grow but it's a it's a desirable place there's not a lot of things you can say about it it's like wow that's a terrible place couldn't live there i mean it's pretty agreeable for most things um south carolina has generally gone with um blue collar manufacturing and retirement. So they've a lot of automotive manufacturing, uh, Bridge, not Bridgestone, uh, Michelin is there, BMW is there, Boeing is there. So you have a lot of uh, stuff like that. Um, so that's been driving a lot of the growth uh, with you know BMW and Michelin in the upstate. So if more companies come there, it's gonna bring more growth. But if, if nothing new comes there, it probably won't grow a lot more. But you know, again, it's such a nice place as, not as well known as Chattanooga or Asheville, but I think it's it should be on the same level of people knowing about it. I don't think it'll get to be Charlotte size. That's a long way um, because Charlotte is just it's a typical huge city with a bunch of suburbs as opposed to a little you know a bunch of smaller ones. Because Green, the city of Greenville itself, I think is only like seventy five thousand people. But Greenville County is about half a million, and then Spartanburg is like 300,000. So um, it'll probably get bigger, but I don't think it'll ever get to 2 million, at least not. It'll be a long way before it gets that. Uh, Boss King, uh, I don't know which Dakota I like better. I like the western half of both of them, so I like West Dakota. <laughs> but I, I'd probably say South Dakota because of the 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 mountains in the west and Sioux Falls is I think a little more interesting than Fargo but they're they're both all right <laughs> well Jeremiah we have plenty of kudzu here I, that'd be an interesting actual question though I don't know who's got it the worst um, Uh, Alex, um, the most, I mean, in my opinion, the most underrated city is Cleveland. I was really shocked, uh, pleasantly surprised the last time I was there, just, you know, how much it had improved since the time I'd been there previously. And just, uh, it, just how it's not really deserving of the bad rap. I mean, Detroit, I don't think it's as bad as the rap it gets, but it, you know, there's plenty of Detroit that you can see why it is treated the way it is. Cleveland, I just don't, I just didn't see it. I, I mean, this bad, bad parts of Cleveland are bad. East Cleveland is really, really rough, but that's a relatively small part of the city compared to, say, Baltimore or Detroit, where a larger percentage of the city is kind of is slum or run down. Uh, I thought most of Cleveland was pretty, pretty nice. I was pleasantly surprised. So I'd say that's the most underrated.
No, this map behind me is hand drawn. Uh, not by me. I mean, I don't know why it's hand drawn. It looks really cool, but I, I'm not sure why they felt to do it with hand, but I, I think it looks great. That's one of the things I like about it. Yeah, Austin, I mean, 102 degrees with high dew point. I mean, like if it ever gets 100 in Tennessee or Georgia, the dew point is going to be low. So it'll still be humid, but it's like if you live in the southeast, you know, when it's 100, it's going to be drier relatively. But when it's 85, it might be so humid you're swimming through the air. So, but Austin, you get the worst of it both ways. You get the hot and the high humidity. So it's that's that's rough. Well, fake Mike, I, I would talk about the Bilderberg meetings, but I'm part of it, so I can't really talk about it too much. So, but uh, yeah, N next video. <clears throat> uh, Juan Pager, I, I don't know. I think D.C. becoming a state is a lot different than Puerto Rico. D.C. is very small. It's literally just a city. Um, their argument is that it has more people than Wyoming, which it does. But I mean, that's that's a low Wyoming. Such a pretty low bar. <laughs> that's a low bar. So, um, I don't have a problem with the concept of it, but just kind of the the geography, it doesn't really work out too well. Because I mean, I don't know. I think it would probably have to, for me at least, it would probably have to have part of Northern Virginia vote to join DC if, and if they wouldn't want to, then forget it. I just don't think DC on its own is big enough. Um, maybe with Alexandria and Arlington added to it, maybe, but then they would have to vote. You can't just take them, kidnap them. <laughs> um, but yeah, who knows? I think that's a different, they get compared DC and Puerto Rico. I think those are two very different things. <clears throat> Uh, Kalispell, yes, I've I've been to Canada, mostly just eastern Canada, southern Ontario, and Montreal. Um, I look to be going back again. Uh, you know, I try to get back as much as I can. Um, best friend lives here in Detroit, and we go across the border here, just you know, to Windsor. But that's not really that ain't Canada. That's just Windsor. Brando, uh, I'm I'm old school with the. Uh, Brand McNally. You know you got problems when you have it literally sitting right next to your desk with this quick access. But yeah, I get one of these every other year. So all the odd number ones I have. And they'll they'll they go with me on road trips. Um because like I'm not any kind of Luddite. I mean I could use tech, but you say look something up, I can boom boom like that way faster than you can Google map it. So um, I, I like to keep this one with the car. Um, but yeah, I, I just a good old Ram and Alley. Um, it's good cartography. I, they've had the best mainstream cartography for a while. I really, really wish they had a they had a Google Map that was Ram McNally based. That was way that had the same features as Google Map, but with better cartography. But anyway, um, favorite Wu Tang member. I, I usually just do geography questions, but. Um, that's a quick one. I, I like uh, I like Inspector Deck. I think he doesn't get much love. Um, and Jizza, I think he's the probably the best lyricist. Uh, Lloyd going to Quebec. Yeah, if you if you anywhere but Montreal, you have to speak French. If you're in Montreal, you can get by with English. But outside of Quebec, outside of Montreal, you people might speak English, but they'll act like they don't. So you probably want to at least know some French. Um, but it's beautiful. I like just uh, how it's, you, you can tell it's not Anglo Canada. It's not Anglo America. It's French. You know, you can see the, the difference in the uh, architecture and just, it's just kind of neat because it feels foreign, you know, because you go to Ontario or Manitoba, it doesn't feel foreign. It's just, you know, just colder. But Quebec does feel kind of foreign. I love Montreal. So that's maybe my favorite. Toronto and Montreal kind of go back and forth with 
what my favorite city is on the continent, not just, I think those are both better than all the U.S. cities, you know, sorry to say. Um, I do need this. Sometimes I don't need a moderator. Sometimes I do. Um, but I, I'm known for doing these things for a while, trying to, and getting to most of the questions. So I, I don't mind it too much. There was one state I couldn't visit. I mean, I've been to all of them, but the two, you know, except for Alaska and Hawaii. So, um, I don't know, Delaware. Who, who cares about Delaware? But, yeah, I don't know. Probably just one of the smaller ones because there's less to see. Portland, Maine, or Portland, Oregon? Oh, definitely Maine. But I haven't been to Portland, Oregon in a long time. Uh, but one thing I'm fascinated about with Portland, Oregon is, from what I know, I believe, I don't focus on negative things too much, but I do believe that Portland, Oregon is the only big city in the country where the highest crime, most dangerous part of the city is the CBD. Like the main heart of the downtown is the most dangerous part of the city, from what I understand. And if that's true, then that's weird because the CBD of cities is almost always safe. Even during the worst days of Detroit, you can go downtown. It was fine. But um, but I was talking to another YouTuber and he was in uh, Portland. He was like, dude, the downtown was rough. And he wasn't like a, you know, a political guy trying to say it's just terrible because it's Portland. But he was like, no, dude, it was rough. So I don't know. So if you're from Portland, let me know. Is downtown, is the CBD the, you know, is that the, the worst part of town, which that would be very strange. Um, but Portland, Maine, I love. Um, and not that I don't like Portland, Oregon when I was there, it's just that it's been a long time, so I can't say for sure. And most of the things I've heard about the past five years or so has not been good for Portland. So um, again, I don't know. I, I don't want to say too much without having experienced it recently. Zozi, um, job offer in Huntsville, uh, right here. Huntsville's nice. Um, you can, I, I mean, I think it's just as nice, maybe even a little bit better than Chattanooga. It's not as well known. It's a little, little less discussed. I think because it's in Alabama, just the word Alabama has such a negative connotation for a lot of people. Um, so it's a little off the radar a little bit, but it's got a good job market. I know people that are moving there. Uh, it's still reasonably cheap. Um, houses are not bad. And if you got offered a job there, if it's a job good enough to consider moving to, then it probably pays well enough. And if it's a good paying job in Huntsville, it's pretty cheap. If you're working a normal type job, it can be like anywhere else. It can be rough because housing prices are going to be adjusted to what you can afford. But um, yeah, I like Huntsville. Downtown's nice. Um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's good. It's like one of the better cities in that size range. So yeah, if you get a chance to to uh oh cool. you oh you just moved to Huntsville. I'm talking like if you moved to Huntsville, no, you just moved there. So yeah, you know, it's pretty good. Actually, Tony, I was just messing around with Delaware. Um now, don't tell this to Philly people, but I the best cheesesteak place I know of is in Delaware. It's right across the river. It's in Wilmington. Um, yeah, I think it's it's better than the the ones I've had in Philly. So, yeah, you heard it here first. Delaware cheesesteaks are better. Yeah, Vancouver, Washington is one of the is a very interesting place because everywhere else in the U.S. where there's a metropolitan area that straddles a state line, the side with the lower taxes is the side with more people. So, like St. Louis, there's more people on the way more on the Missouri side. It's higher tax. You know, here there's way more people in Tennessee than 
Georgia, right across the border. And that's how it is basically anywhere. You know, people would rather live in the, if you're going to live in the same metro, why wouldn't you pay less taxes? And here, the Quad Cities, Iowa and Illinois are both high tax, but the, there's pretty much even for both sides. But, um, yeah, but Vancouver here is it's cheaper. So Washington has no income tax, but really high sales tax. And then Oregon has really high income tax, but the vast majority of the people in the metro area live in Oregon. I don't think the zero sales tax would make up for no, in, I don't know, but I do find it quite interesting that there's such a big discrepancy in that population where it's almost all on the Oregon side, not Washington. Uh, Andrew, I, uh, I have been to Great Basin National Park, right about here. This, actually, this um, pin is for someone that wanted to be near it. Um, yeah, great spot. It's very lightly visited. I-15 goes here. I-80 goes here. There's, I mean, nothing goes through here. It's literally called the loneliest road in America. It goes like this. Um, yeah, not many people there. The little town outside the park, you know, normally you think of national park towns having a couple of motels, or a couple of gas stations, a grocery store. There's nothing there. You better get your stuff before you get to that little town because um, yeah, there's like a one little tiny, like a little tiny little convenience store there. That's about it. Uh, Kevin, I'm not sure about the with the Berg suffix. I have to take a while to think about that. Any state rivalry greater than Michigan and Ohio? I, I, that is a pretty big um, rivalry. I think it's, I mean, hilarious how Skyline Chili has expanded to uh, Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, it'll, they'll never have one in Michigan. It'll, uh, it'll never do that. Um, I think, uh, Texas and Texas likes to make fun of Oklahoma. Um, I think Oklahoma just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't know if it's really a rivalry so much. Um, but yeah, I mean, Michigan, Ohio is kind of a funny thing. I, I like that. I've eaten a lot of tea steaks in Philly. I've had a lot of the major ones, a lot of the smaller ones. And this place, what's it called? Goodfellas. It's called Goodfellas. It's in a strip mall in Wilmington. Well, when I'm president, I'm gonna, Ryan, I'm gonna annex all kinds of stuff. Um, oh yeah. I want St. Pierre and Miquelon. It's this little thing up here. It's part of France. It's next to Canada. They don't, either, either one deserve it. I'm taking it. I mean, I'm taking Baja, not Tijuana. Well, well Tijuana will be an exclave for Mexico, but I'm taking Baja. So yeah, that's, that's my platform. Vote for me, I'm taking Baja. Yeah, New York and New Jersey is another kind of I think New York and New Jersey is kind of like Texas, Oklahoma. The big guy likes to pick on the little one, and the little one's like, what are you making fun of? We're better than you. Kevin, why is Illinois losing population? I think with Illinois, it's... Same with California. It's high taxes. Of course, Illinois is cheap, though. I don't, I don't understand the exodus in Illinois as much as California because, I mean, houses are cheap. Property taxes are really high, but high property tax on a cheap house is not going to be any more than medium property tax on an expensive house. So, um, so I don't know. I, I think, it's, and it's not really Chicago either. I think people think that the the population loss is here, but it's really more here, more downstate, and it might be agricultural jobs losing. Um, uh, I know Caterpillar, I think, 
move some jobs to another state. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's a, not an expensive state, but it is high tax. Living in Illinois, working in Missouri, ruining your wallet. Yeah, it's usually the, the opposite um, commute. But, I mean, I'm not sure how it is there specifically. But Georgia, I mean, the city, uh, the city of Chattanooga's southern boundary is the state line. So there's immediately suburbs. And there are people that live there, despite Tennessee being one of the five lowest tax states and Georgia being the single highest tax state in the south. There's still a couple hundred thousand people that live there. And I think it's mainly because people with kids, because the schools are better in Georgia, you're paying more taxes. But Tennessee, the schools are underfunded. A lot of folks send their kids to private schools, which are way more than your taxes would be for public schools. So um, so I'm not sure how Missouri and Illinois are, because there are still a decent number of people on the Illinois side, but the vast majority are on the Missouri side. My first, Kevin, my first great road trip was 1998. We started here. Our best friend just moved to Detroit, and we just drove. We were 21 years old. Um, yeah, we were, we were, I had just turned 21, so we were all able to hang out and hit the bars on the, we were college students and we we're hitting all the college towns. And so it was fun. Um, and then it was, as I got older, the things I saw have been different, but that first trip was great. It got the ball rolling. Yeah, Wisconsin and Illinois don't like each other too. That's another one you hear, um, like state rivals. Yeah, Andrew, I, I mean, I'm not a huge follower of college sports, but just from the geography standpoint, when I saw that the freaking Big Ten, the Midwest Conference, added LA, that's dumb. Um, it's only because they want Big Ten games on the TVs, and he, who cares? TV markets don't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I thought that was a very odd move on their part. Um, yeah, that's gonna. I mean, can you imagine now if you are on the swimming team or the diving team or tennis, the non the sports that don't generate revenue? Now you have to fly to Minnesota, Ohio, Pennsylvania. The Big Ten is in New Jersey and Maryland, too. So these schools, this, the sports that aren't making much money, they're still, I don't get it, whatever. I, I'm kind of done with sports, honestly, the past <laughs> 10 years. Senior Bain, uh, Denver is expensive, but the thing about Denver, it's it's really high wage. The salaries there are pretty high, so it is expensive, but it's nowhere near as expensive as Seattle. Seattle's, they get compared to a lot, but Seattle is a lot more expensive than Denver. Denver's more like DC. It's expensive, but it's not that bad compared to, you know, LA, San Francisco, New York, Honolulu, those really expensive ones. Six Flags Visalia next week. Yes, 5440 is right. Actually, actually free at that. I want 7440. Canada gets nothing. A GCE, when do I think the Midwest real estate revival begins? I don't know. I think it's uh when things get too expensive in the places that are growing. I, I just, like I was saying before, I think it's just gonna be a fluid move. I mean, there's been multiple times in US history where people have moved one direction or another and just been a general flow. I mean, it's such a huge country. Um, but with so many jobs being working from home, I, I mean, it's tough to say what's gonna happen. Um, 
I don't know. But um, it's still cheap in the Midwest. So I'm the kind of person that'd be like, you know, this is right now a great time to move from Austin or Seattle, to move away from places that are, everyone's moving to and move to somewhere people are leaving to be ahead of the ball or to make a really dumb decision one or the other. But I think uh, people are starting to look at the Midwest as a little more, oh, maybe it's not so bad up there. Maybe it's kind of like with Cleveland. All that you hear about is negative, and you hear the term Rust Belt. I say it all the time myself. Oh, Rust Belt, dirty. It's all old factories and, you know, the, the manholes with the steam coming up. It's those gloomy scenes of cold cities up north. But um, I think people are starting to realize it's not I don't like that. It was like that for quite a while and, and still pretty bad in some places. But uh, I expect the Midwest to rebound. It has actually it has been rebounding. I don't think, uh, I'm looking at the map, I think Illinois is the only Midwestern state that's losing population right now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they all, they're all gaining. So, um, so I I think it'll probably continue to be the same. I think Detroit is going to be where you'll start to see some growth, and I predict that twenty thirty census will be the first one Detroit gains population since nineteen fifty, which is crazy. But um, yeah, and then we'll see maybe you know Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, Indianapolis, other ones that are maybe. Not cool, but might become cool in the future. Uh, Albert, yeah, I would say Atlanta is definitely the, the, you know, I call it the capital of the South. It's just, it's where so much is. It's just the diversified economy, major companies, the the big airport. You have to, if you're going to be flying through for half the time, but. Yeah, I, Andrew, I'm. I don't know if you're joking, but hipsters to Gary, I think, is a thing. I mean, I was just in Gary last year, and there's two Garys. There's Gary, the one that's always on the news, which is rough. It's rough. It's really, really bad. It's about as bad as it gets, and deserving of its reputation. But there's a whole other part of Gary that's. It's just like a normal middle class neighborhood it's on the on the lake shore. Um, it's right next to Indiana Dunes National Park. I mean, it's it's kind of nice. The houses there are super cheap because it's it's in Gary, Indiana. But it, um, it'd be kind of like being in a nice part of Detroit or Cleveland. I mean, you're, people don't know it's nice, but it's so cheap. But uh, there's probably other issues, I'm sure, because, I mean, the schools there probably aren't great. So if, if you have kids, it might not be where you want to go. But um. You know, that's why I'm saying the hipsters could take over Gary because there's already been some kind of funky salons and this there's a little bit of hipness going on in Gary, but it's I think it's close enough to Chicago where it you know you're close, you can still go to Chicago but not have to pay those property taxes and you know blah blah blah. So we'll see. It's but it is pretty rough. I mean the other one, Cairo or Cairo, however it's pronounced, Illinois, the southern that place is gnarly. But it, it's a city that had 30,000 people, and now there's like 1,000. It's, it's dropped that much. And so you could totally turn that place into something if you get 1,000 to 1 people move there, can vote for whatever ridiculous city council they can get and make it the most whatever town in the country. Uh, Max, for me, um, if I could live anywhere, so I have a pin on here too. It's uh, outside of Santa Fe. So my wife and I, we have pretty similar tastes. We like cities about the size of Santa Fe or Asheville, North Carolina or Portland, Maine. These are um, cities under 100,000 people, but they feel a lot bigger. They have much more of a, you know, the, they, the phrase is they punch above their above their weight class. And so we like, we like those. Um, if it weren't for the climate, I probably actually would pick Portland, Maine over Santa Fe. Um, I, I like New Mexico more than Maine, but I like Portland more than Santa Fe. But it's really expensive. Um, but if I had ultimately, if I had all the money in the world, I would certainly snowbird somewhere six months here, six months somewhere else. Um, 
That would be my best scenario. Stanford, if there was Skyline Chile in Chattanooga, I'd probably never go. I'd probably hate it if it was in town. I don't know. Um, but my favorite places I don't go to too often in town or anywhere just because I don't want to get sick of them. New Chicago and East Chicago. I've been to East Chicago. I don't, I've never heard of New Chicago. <laughs> yeah, the FLDS can move to Cairo. That'd be an interesting one. A SOP, um, anything that we could do to bridge the urban-rural divide? Yeah, just uh, stop watching political media. And, you know, I think it's all just come from the media. Uh, most of the crazy things you hear are from people that haven't been to the places that they're, you know, screaming about. And then, but when you get people that go to this place they're supposed to hate, they're like, oh, this actually is not that bad. And so um, I just think, you know, keeping people's heads out of the political propaganda, I think that's probably the best way to mend fences. I mean, mend, whatever that phrase is. Um, yeah, I mean, there's this, I'm not going to mention names, but there are channels that all they do is say, this place sucks because of this, and it's just all this negative. And it's, if you get a little more balance to the narrative, I think it could end some of the uh, animosity. I think this lack of, I mean, not you guys, obviously, but I mean, people don't care about geography for the most part. And so, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's going somewhere else. But I, I, I just think that propaganda is really driving the wedge um, in the country. But, all right, so it's nine o'clock. I'll, I'll answer a couple more. I usually do these things for about three hours. So we're, we're there now. Um, so I'll, All right. Lloyd, that's a very specific question. I don't know. My favorite Northwestern South Dakota county. I don't even know if I can name one. Box Elder? That's not really Northwest. That's uh, West Central. I don't, I don't know what these counties are. All right, so. All right, so the last one I'm going to answer. All right, so Liam. Uh, so he's asking about Tornado Alley shifting east. So Tornado Alley is generally referred to as this area, the, the Great Plains. You know, we have the largest number of tornadoes, and it's gradually been going this way. So you're getting a lot. So if you live up here, probably 30, 40 years ago, you were getting a lot more up here. And fewer down here, but now there's, you, st you can still certainly get severe weather up here, but it's becoming more and more this way with Louisiana and Mississippi. This is really bad. So, um, and it's just general climate change. You know, it's not, um, because what, what happens to get these, these severe storms is it's really cold, dry air coming from Canada up Arctic areas. This is warm, damp air from the Gulf. And so when these, two layers combined is when you get a lot of the atmospheric instability. So when you get big changes in pressure and temperature is where you can get the instability to lead to tornadoes. So with this area here, it's not quite as cold as it used to be. So it's a little bit warmer. So now the, the, the lines where things come together, the frontal areas are, it's, it's shifting. So you get the more disturbance, more turbulence here, um, yeah, I mean, really, coming out to here, too. I mean, just in the time we've lived here, there's been several tornado outbreaks, um, and it's been gotten, you know, pretty bad in the south. And it also, it's worse for the south because most of the tornadoes in the south happen at night. When people are sleeping, a lot of folks turn their phones off at night when they might get the, the emergency warning. Um, so, yeah, the, you have a much higher death rate in the south, a lot more mobile homes. Fewer homes have basements, so 
from the physical geography of the shifting is not good because these areas are not as used to it. I mean, there's a lot more brick houses here, a um, lot more basements, a lot more enclosed basements here. Yeah, we have a, I'm sitting in a basement, but I'm looking out a window right there. So it doesn't, doesn't do any good. But yeah, you're starting to see a lot more severe weather down here and less of it here. But of course, you can still get up here as well. Um, all right, well, we're uh, three hours in, so I have to call it a night. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, joining me for the evening. Um, thank you for all the super chats and for the questions. And I, I love doing these things because, you know, the viewers of this channel are, you know, really good. And the questions are always, um, you know, good, uh, not, not low-hanging fruit questions for the most part. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to have, again, I'm going to have a final announcement about this map. And I'll do one more video on the map. And it'll be a, a regular, real video just going over the final stuff. So um, if you want one last chance at it, you can. And I'll put a like a community post or something to announce that. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So thank you guys very much. Uh, Andrew, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I do appreciate all the support and um, hope they keep it up and hope you guys uh, stay inter interested in the channel. So um, look for something to be posted later on this week. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you guys a lot. Enjoy the uh, rest of your, what is today, Sunday. Enjoy your week coming up. All right. Bye, guys.